Um, are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Um, I just have a brief update on the uh, tech group stuff. Okay. <laughs> Let me promo uh, the photo sharing stuff. Okay, awesome. And we, we have a, I, I would like to make use of the potential of the session meeting. Yep, okay. Uh, and Evan, you had something? Did I? Yep. Uh, well, we're going to discuss invoices and orders. That's item number one. I think it would fit underneath that. No, you have the so we have the flood mitigation that um, the letter that we had to sign the banks for. What is it? How would I describe that? Oh, there's a, a grant offer. You talking you have to submit a letter of intent by September second. Oh, you're talking about the email that I forwarded. I don't have an agenda. Would we like to have that and discuss it? It's yes. a very, very, very short track. We need to start to discuss it. Letter of intent for river mitigation, river bank mitigation. Sure. <coughs> I am curious. Doesn't that make you excited? It makes me bad. I bet. I'm curious. Um, do we know um, whether we've been uh, moving that ARPA money around so that we're spending it in a way that frees up the ARPA money? Have we applied it to our budget? No, not yet, if that's what you're asking. Yes. No, we have not. We need to bring that up as a topic. Oh, okay. That, so I am curious. Do we want to bring that up as a topic? It, is there any pressing need to bring it up? For tonight's meeting? Yeah. Oh, not for tonight, no. But maybe we can add that one to our September 11th, whatever the date is. Well, I think, I mean, it sort of uh, falls under the Northern Border Regional Commission grant topic, I'd say, because we had talked about. It's a about different topic, though. They're related, but it's not. Related. Related. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure we are on top of that before we lose it. Just for you, I threw them out here. Look at this. I, I, I got one out. <coughs> and I have a pencil, but preparation never run out of ink. Put it in my pocket, then I forgot. Oh, okay, I had three out on the table. <laughs> Just in case. Okay, um, so we'll do that all the 11th. Okay, good. Um, any other adjustments or agenda items? For agenda items. Okay. Next up, review and approve invoices and orders. So Evan, the serve pro. We're paying no more invoices. Okay, but seriously. Uh, there's three invoices for serve pro. Uh, invoice number 499468788 and 85. Uh, and <clears throat> one is for the library, which is the 87. One is for the municipal building, which is 85. Uh -huh. The invoice ending in 8 8 is listed as library dry storage. Um, and I believe from the pictures and the quoted amounts, that is the dry, lower dry storage, which the village is handling because they pay for the insurance on that building. It's just, it's just size. So, can we approve them without that specific invoice being paid and some follow up being done on it? So I, I, I lost track. That invoice would go to the village for <clears throat> because they're handling the FEMA reimbursement for the lower storage. We are we already agreed that whatever wasn't covered by FEMA and insurance, we would pick up you know the half of it because we're fifty percent owners. Um, but the invoice for proper FEMA reimbursement, I believe, should go to the village. That specific one. I think that with all of the invoices on the invoices, so I'm not answering you directly. I know. But I am hesitating in approving any of the invoices if they don't list the proper address of the location because I think that will be difficult later. So, did we get updated invoices, Carl? Do you know? 
Did I send? Well, I didn't are, see any. Those I are don't. updated without the sales tax, but nothing since. No, the yeah, yeah. Okay, so the address. Being that there's still a question, can we just approve it without CERPRO invoices altogether? Because I don't have questions on, you know, the other ones are diesel, fuel, rental. I am surprised that we're getting fuel from Brussels because we had a, had a contract with Fred's. I'm not sure where that one landed, but. Would it surprise you if it <clears throat> didn't get to Okay. There? Um, the three major questions I have are surf pro. <clears throat> So if you want, you could leave the three surf pro invoices out of the approval. The one that's marked dry storage staff can enter the, in the village's AP order for their special meeting tomorrow. Staff is working on those invoices. So they were until five o'clock and then they're gonna finish up tomorrow morning. And then the other two, I'm sorry, the other question about the addresses when we meet with FEMA tomorrow, we can ask them if that's going to be a problem or you know, a complication. The address isn't right. But on the other hand, there's pictures there to show what the building it is. Yeah. That'd be almost nice to have Ron for that short conversation. He'll be there tomorrow morning. So, can I, even though we don't motion to approve the invoices, can I motion to approve them? Remitting the three invoices from Surf Pro from this list. Sounds like you just did. Uh, it's not second. really typical protocol of motion, but I feel like it needs to be clear. Yeah, you just did. It's okay. yeah, no, I think it's good. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Can I add one question mark? No. <clears throat> Are you seconding? First? It's this one. I am seconding it. Okay, good. Now, discussion. Yep. Yes. Um, the discussion I have is there is a <coughs> listing here with an invoice description of pup vein trash for Dana Sweet. I that, assume that really should be flood related. It is flood related trash. Yes. It is, and if it has a code. Yeah. Oh, what's the uh, separation uh, between the uh, library uh, and the dry storage? Well, I think, the, I think the library is. The invoice itself is probably oh, right, yes. in there. Okay. And the dry storage and the separate invoice all together. Like all of them? Summary. I'm just concerned that it says pop a as opposed to flood. I got you. Yep, I got you. This is Can we ask code. him to so if this resubmit the, the invoice? It, which it is right here, then it's under the flood. So yep. it's 53.7 <coughs> is the flood rated items. So I, would, I would just suggest that maybe whoever is doing the invoices go in and change that description from pop bang to flood. <clears throat> not trash flood, so it matches yeah. the others. Yeah, so it lines yeah. up. Okay. That makes sense. So it's a friendly number of amendment. Deal. Okay. All so, those in favor? Oh, yeah, go ahead. So Evan is clarifying for me that that line that says library dry storage is really just dry storage. We believe so, but we're we need to not clarify to all pay of them. Any of them this so, week. We'll pay every other invoice except for those three. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I just have it. Do you want to make it no buy on that? Yeah, I sure. Oh, okay. You have much better. Sure. Okay. Next up is review and approve select board meeting minutes from August 14th. To, no, to jump back a little bit to your question about why we're paying invoice to Brasso Fuel, can we um, <clears throat> ask Carl to revisit that? given the fact that we did issue a bid to someone other than Brasso, you feel? Well, maybe. Uh, so what What was that program or company that we talked about uh, a couple months ago? Competitive Energy Services. Is that They act as a broker, and that got left to that point where they wanted the select board to approve their agreement before they started shopping around for prices for you. And then the flood came. And just gotcha. So to but I was wondering if we were going through that and they had contracted Brussels. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So what, what the issue is, is, is 
last August joint meeting, uh, we approved a contract with, was it Fred? Uh, yeah, they were the winning bidder for Rack Plus pricing. Yeah. yeah, and so if, if that never got communicated, Brasso is probably still delivering fuel, and they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So this was an action taken at a joint meeting and when in, back in May? August of 2022, August, September area. Yeah, probably. probably yeah. All right. I know somebody look into that. Okay, where are we with approving minutes? Motion to approve meeting minutes, August 14, as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Consider setting pay rate for floodplain regulation administrative officer. And the majority of this is reimbursable, correct? Yes, it would be because reimbursable. <clears throat> um, we need, do need to get something entered with FEMA to notify them of our intent to seek reimbursement for these expenses. And <clears throat> when I asked Ron in his experience if that $30 an hour would be reasonable or viewed reasonably by FEMA, he said yes. Um, this is, just to be clear though, this is a long-term pay rate and short term will the expense to get to me. right the long term isn't like crazy amount of hours short term is is heavier hours right yeah are you comfortable with the uh, proposed hourly rate scott sure i would move a, a rate of 30 dollars per hour for the floodplain zoning administrator second any discussion just thank you scott again yes thank you very much yes. thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Okay, good. Next up, um, consider approving a name for a new private road. I don't know if we deferred naming it. Um, uh, Carl was looking into the conflicts with E911, with 911 addresses, and something else. But, and both but the motion was to just name it that as long as there weren't conflicts. Oh. Sounds like that's what okay. I do believe that was the motion. Did it did it get shifted over to the Historical Society for their, they're probably going to punt on it, but did it get sent to them for their interview and consideration? I you give me just one second with my high technology. Time's well, up. he's looking that up, Duncan. Um, so we found the ordinance, but we can't. Except for what you said, is we can't find that other document, ordinance amendment or policy. Really? So it's a good thing you sent it, and we're, we're trying to sort through that now to see how the template. My point exactly. <laughs> so at, at our meeting on the 21st, the motion was Beth moved to approve the name of North Highland Drive contingent on finding no conflicts with postal system or E91 at 911 address and no request in town policy or historic society review. And I seconded it. But there is, and the board uh, approved it. And I sent a copy of it to everybody. So you're saying that because, well, maybe I'm confused. Yeah, my understanding was check and see if there's conflicts with any of the three. If there's not, we're good to go. And it, I still think that's fine, but I think that it should be sent to the historical society for a cursory review, they're probably going to punt on it. 
right, yeah. given the fact that they did the I'm, last time in naming a private road. But I just fine. Let's send it to them. Yeah. And if they do, we've already approved it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't see a need for a motion. Um, no, let's just do it. Yeah. I think the homework's all been done, and we just need to hear back from the historic society, and, yeah. and then it's good to go after that. Okay. Next item: proving purchase on copier. This was, uh, we brought this up last meeting. Yeah. What did we do with last meeting? At, well, Carl did some follow-up because um, we were asking if we needed more than one quote. And I believe in your report, Ron, uh, or Carl, you said Ron uh, believes that we're good to go moving forward with <coughs> 7300 Seven dollars and forty-seven cents. Is that your correct amount? I would motion to purchase copier at, at the value. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Right. Aye. 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 Have it. So, given that ruling you brought at last meeting, the um, potential res request for co-file for yeah, restoring a book. Dead. If that also falls under the ten thousand, is it reasonable to assume that we can single source that to go for? We have some basis to say that it's reasonable and anticipated. So I provided you with information that the previous copy you purchased was even more expensive, more expensive than what you're buy now. So that would seem to make the one you want to buy now a reasonable price. We have nothing to compare that. Twelve hundred and thirteen hundred and some dollar figure two for the remediation of that land records book. And Susan's been out straight. Yeah. So, so she hasn't had a chance to go on Muninet and Sorry. see what other companies might do that kind of work. I wonder how it compares to we, we on a regular annual basis we send books volumes to Co-File for basic um um, you know, cleaning and and whatnot. I don't. I, my memory is that that figure is not drastically out of perspective from those basic, you know, renovations that we have done. Um, maybe I could step in here. My only reser reservation was making sure we complied with FEMA for reimbursement. I, I didn't think the twelve hundred dollars was an exorbitant cost um, so we could make a motion to approve it's not on this meeting though and it's not as an added item correct it's not on this meeting it's not as an added item correct can we add the item now it was it was at our last meeting, last at our last meeting. meeting. I don't know if that, yeah but we didn't it was it was a potential follow-up item well, we could deal with we could certainly deal with it at our next meeting. Yeah, my yeah, we'll my big meeting, we're not I would be meeting. fine with you know motioning right. for the expense contingent upon it being you know raw and being Very comfortable reasonable. with it or yeah. something like that. Um, let's do it at the next so that we at least have it worn because it's not a small expense. Yeah. Okay. Um, Northern approving uh, documents for Northern Borders. <coughs> Commission grant. Congratulations. Woohoo! It's very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Well, I would like to thank Beth and Duncan for all their hard work. And Paul. And Paul. And Paul. And, Paul. and, Paul. and, and there's LCPC. a bunch of names I'm forgetting, so everybody else. LCPC. LCP didn't, LCPC. LCPC didn't do a lot on that one. They did They did more on the EDC grant, but they, they helped us. <coughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. It is a deal. We do. It's very exciting. So we have paperwork to fill out. We have equipments to make. Uh, all that good stuff. So I'm just going to maybe um, read out loud what the document says. And Donna, we'll get you a copy. Okay. Um, but Town of Johnson, Beth Foy, on behalf of Governor Phil Scott and Northern Border Brief. Northern Border Regional Commission, we congratulate you and your organization for receiving 
the 2023 Catalyst Grant Award. Your project was awarded $861,945.42. And the Northern Board has received 187 applications this year for the Catalyst Grant Cycle, requests of over $150 million in total funding. Across the four states, only 66 applications were selected, so we congratulate you on this achievement. Please, please note that while you have been awarded the grant, additional information is needed before you can move forward with your project or incur any expense to be paid uh, for this award, for by this award. Um, please review the following items carefully and return all requested materials by September 8th. You may not move forward in your project or expend any grant or matching funds until you receive a notice to proceed or partial notice to proceed from Northern Borders. I'm summarizing, by the way, just replacing acronyms with names. Northern Borders and or match cost share funds expended prior to the issuance of the notice to proceed are not eligible for reimbursement and it may not count as a match. Expenditures of grant and matching funds prior to receiving this notice could result in Northern Borders reducing or rescinding your award for additional information regarding this blah, blah, blah. In order to expedite the process, all grantees must complete the following steps. One, attend a mandatory new grantee training session, and there's details. Two, execute documentation necessary for Northern Borders to issue a grant agreement. Three, complete a required environmental review process. And four, contact your local development district unless you have previously, uh, you have a previously provided waiver. Um, we're excited to grant you this, begin the grant process with you. Um, we wish you great success. So, I don't know the form for that. I would move to authorize the Chairman Foy to sign any and all forms necessary to comply with the initial grant requirements. I'll second if you're open to changing chairman to chairperson. Chair, did I say chairman? I didn't mean it's okay. chairman. Chairperson. I, I heard person. Uh, any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Oh, uh, yeah. Are you in favor of you? Well, I was going to ask if you wanted to add instructions for the sitting TA at the time to attend the meeting on the sixth, but. I think that's kind of goes without saying, I guess. I, I'm. <coughs> is is there a date for that mandatory meeting? Paul? The mandatory meeting is September twenty eighth. Um, if by chance we have a <coughs> an appointment for a community economic development specialist in order by that time, I think that would be a good person to attend that training. I agree. I mean, I think both, honestly, CDS and TA. Touche. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good point. So can we leave that open enough that we will make sure that we have an appropriate person attend that here? Yes. Or four people. I think so. Yeah, the question I always have, I would like to get a couple of ears on it. Like, I think it would be good to have LCPC there, too. Um, again, somebody from our town. I don't know if it's possible or not, but. Did anybody else in the county secure a grant? Any other um, I sent a list of the full recipients right. and don't remember. Yeah. Do you know? I just saw Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody uh, close, but I don't think in the Loyal County. I want to say somebody from the Hardwick, maybe. <clears throat> Uh, there are a bunch of businesses. And things I think the Yellow Barn project in Hardwick received yeah. an agreement. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, we have a motion on the, on the floor. So, um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it, and I will do that before I leave. Okay. okay. So, Victoria is here, and there was some question about. Um, how the different 
grants put together the EDA and this one and then the ARP money? Yep. And did anybody have any? Yeah, questions? so, yeah, I do. I'll start us off if you don't mind. The first question is, where are we with EDA and what are the next steps? Um, so, we have all of the applications filled out, all of the forms and stuff are ready to go. Um, they kind of put pause on submission until we move back from the orders because the amount that we'll um, request will depend on what you got for this. So, yep. um, I'm not sure if Tosh is on, but she is here. Okay. Um, but I don't know if we have, uh, Tim, do we have a speaker? Or, uh, no, it's okay. Okay. Um, Tasha, do you have anything else that you want to add? And let me just, I need to un, I need to turn my speaker on before we hear you, so just bear with me for one second. Let me do news. Um, that's not right. And is what we're talking about in prep for the September 8th deadline? Um, 20. 20. I thought I heard. Okay, there's two deadlines. One is that we need to fit, send the application in by September oh. 8th, yeah, and the meeting that. is on September 28th. So um, there was that. Oh, and this the is EDA a is right. a different grant altogether. Okay. And we started the process, and then the deadline got pushed out. And so we paused, and to Victoria's point, we're waiting for, um, we're waiting for this. Sorry, Tasha, I don't know if we can hear you or not. We're going to try, though. Is there anything you wanted to add, Tasha? Oh, thanks so much. Can you hear me okay? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear you. Um, she, did, she has more experience with the Northern Borders grant than I do and can speak a little bit more to the um, matching of federal funds. Mm -hmm. So for some reason my speakers aren't. Oh, I know why. Sorry, I know why. Oops. Yeah, that's the best one. Recording in progress. Hold on. Yeah. Alien relation. Okay, we can't talk, Tasha, or it will go crazy, but you can. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Nodding, Nodding thumbs, thumbs up. up. Okay, thanks, thanks so much. So much. <laughs> I appreciate that. that. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased you've gotten this award, award and I want to say kudos to um, Tori, who did a tremendous um, amount of work helping out uh, Beth and Duncan on this. Um, regarding the EDA grant, um, Matt Sadowski, who used to be the EDA contact for our region, was very specific that we hold off um, on the EDA grant until you got the Northern Borders one because of the structure of the match. As you know, this Northern Borders grant uh, requires you to come up with 50% match. Northern Borders is a little weird. In fact, it's different from every other federal grant program in that you're gonna need to identify this match, but if you get the EDA grant for some amount of money, EDA plus Northern Borders can be up to 80% of the cost of this project. So it really would um, change uh, what the uh, community would need to put forward for this project. Um, I think I understand that you would need to bond, but this would allow you to do is less of that bonded money in the first stage and have some that ready um, for the next stage of the project to get the EDA grant. Um, a couple of things to think about. Um, we're, we're happy to, uh, Victoria's already reached out to the new EDA contact, Catherine. Uh, Tori and I talked about um, applying for the, I can't do the math in my head, the right amount of EDA money so that it gets you up to the 80% um, match. And I uh, probably would, would appreciate um, the select board discussing if that's the direction you want to go in. And the other thing I would say is we currently have a Northern Borders grant ourselves for work in the notch. 
and it is an administratively demanding grant. So I think that you want to think about uh, whether or not you want to do that uh, in-house. If you end up hiring somebody in the town with experience, that's probably fine. Or you might think about uh, working with us to do the grant administration. Um, but I think you'll learn more when attending the meeting on, I think it's the 28th. And I'm happy to answer questions if, if I can't hear, I don't know if you turn me off to speak or you send me something in the chat, but I am here and happy to answer questions. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Tasha. If you go on mute, it'll stop. Yeah. If you go on mute, it'll oh, stop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Well, that's me. Alien Sorry, I forget these things. It's only been a week since I've had to do it last. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sorry. I have to turn my speaker off while you're <laughs> speaking. While I'm speaking and then blah, blah, yeah. Um, that's really helpful information. Thank you. Um, I think we know we want to go for the EDA grant. I think we had previously approved it. So we're good to just push on with that at this point. Tori does does the fact that we have a, obtained the NBRC grant change the nature of what gets applied for through the EDA grant? Or is it basically the same? It's, you're supporting the same project, so what you're applying to get money for is not going to change. Um, I guess it would just be in like dollar amount. So we would specifically target areas of the grant application for matching funds through the EDA? Um, the EDA application materials currently talk about supporting the whole project in general, but um, I guess you could go after specific elements if you wanted. I'm not sure about that. Go we'll after the whole more. project. Yeah, I'm why probably we, going after the whole project, but, but they're not going to give us. I mean, if they know that we're, if the, if they if we were told to hold off because they wanted to know whether we got the NDRC, their the amount of funding they're going to put towards this is obviously not going to be 100. Um, percent um, so, Tasha says when we meet when when LCPC meets with the EDA, they can ask those questions and see what they recommend. Good. Okay. Well, I, I'm all in favor of going full speed ahead. If we can possibly get 80% funding instead of 50, I'm all in. Yeah. I don't have enough money left over for the pool. Yeah. Tori, do you know um, what the new deadline is? Um, for EDA? Yeah. Um, it's rolling. Oh, it's rolling. Oh, okay. that's handy. Um, cool. Matt had just advised us the last one in the ASAP and then um, changed. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, cool. All right, any other questions? Do you have anything else that, just let's do this real quickly. Um, is there anything else that you have on your list for us, Tori? Um, I don't think so. We're talking about more. Um, but Does it look like we're going to get more than one evaluation? I'm not sure. But you're pulling really hard. That's what I'm hearing, right? They're prioritizing highest energy burden towns, so that's Johnson. Really? That's a very bad news. <laughs> Sorry, how <clears throat> different subject all but how is that determined, energy burden? Um, there's Efficiency Vermont published a report on in 2019, and they did the math based on the percentage of income that's spent on Energy costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, from so a if you have a, if you have a lower average income but spend the same amount on fuel, you would have higher burden. Exactly. So that's based on the citizen general citizenry, not not the municipal budget. 
right. per se. Uh, yeah. Um, and we were the lowest in the county, or the highest energy burden. Right. Really? Good to know. Well, if you if like a high percentage of our homes use oil, and you make forty thousand dollars in your household, that's I mean that's quick math to say that's a high burden. Right. And you don't have good insulation because we have old homes. And we have mobile homes that burn <laughs> kerosene. Um, okay. A lot. Cool. Tasha, did you have anything else that, um, Tasha says the only thing you might need a federal single, a federal single audit one year with the grants. Okay. So we might get an audit, a federal audit. Federal audit, so we need to budget accordingly. Is a federal audit more in depth than the rolling audit that we get? Tasha's saying yes. And that doesn't mean the feds come and audit. That means we hire an auditor to come in. Yeah, and the auditor auditor just adds on that level of auditing work. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Fun. Great. I mean, we got Northern Borders grant. We're probably higher on the audit list with that alone. We might. Is it? Uh, um, Tasha, is it still seven hundred and fifty thousand that triggers the? She's giving a thumbs up. <clears throat> okay. Um, Tori, thank you very much for coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very thank much for, for all your work to get us to this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very um, exciting. I don't know if there's any way to uh, extend, you know, to reach out to to. Um, uh, I'm blanking on his Sal. Name. To, Sal. Um, but. It, you know, letting him know that we got the grant, he, he'd probably be happy to. Yeah, I've been texting yeah. him a little updates. Yeah. Nice. Well, Tom, thank you for us. That's very exciting. Um, and I'll reach out hopefully with forms that you can actually fill and sign. Yeah, beautiful. It's <laughs> 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 my run one request in life. If you send a PDF, make it fillable. <laughs> Thanks, Tori. So, Thanks again. Uh, Tasha, thank you so much. You're welcome to hang out. We appreciate all your help. Um, okay, next up is consider designating a voting delegate to the annual VLCT meeting. That has to be done by today. Yeah, we're out, we're out of time at this point, yeah. Before September. And I won't be here, just a reminder. Uh, I won't be here, by the way. I think I said it kind of in passing last time, but I'll, I'll be out of the country beginning on the 20th. 20th. Where are you going? to London and Amsterdam. How long are you going to be away from? Just for a week. Oh, it's hardly enough. I know. So I think we should know that we're going to maybe play at the end of the evening. We'll know <clears throat> for sure about the town administrator. Mm -hmm. um, we could certainly mm -hmm. reach out to him and see if he wants to attend. And if not, we could appoint someone else to attend. What are you, what? What's your, what are you moaning about? I know. Later. <laughs> okay, later is fine. Do we want to have a um, alternate right now? We could say I can be the alternate. The alternate. Okay. You're going to be there anyway? No, I said I can be the alternate. Oh. I, I don't want to have to take time off work to do it, but if I absolutely have to. Okay. So Shane is an alternate. Do we want a motion? We could just motion for a head administrator with Shane as an alternate. There's a form that needs to be sent so, in, right, Carol? Um, well, they didn't send the form. It might be um, submitted through the portal. No. They actually didn't say in the letter either how you're supposed to submit the name, so I, but I assume the portal. OK, Evan just said so moved. Is there a second? So second. Was, the motion so is for the town administrator to yeah, be the yep to be our voting delegate with Shane as an alternate if that person's not available. Um, any discussion? Ooh, I missed the dinner with casino night part. 
<laughs> okay. okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Um, consider approving bidding specifications for library repair. Okay. <clears throat> have two sets of bidding specifications. The library and general contractor. <coughs> library specs are on top of our handing out, and I would suggest you talk about the library, I'm sorry, the electrical work first. Uh, I have two of the okay. same. Does somebody else have two of the same? Yes. Which one do you have? Uh, general specifications, instructions, the bidders. You should be looking right above that. It'll say either electrical repairs or Johnson flood repairs. Flood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Johnson Library Let's flood see. repair. Oh. Yes. Very tricky. It does Carl. look very similar until you find that. Very tricky, Carl. Because they even started, they had a background right at the top. Like, they both they, say Town of Johnson. You know? Yeah, they like, Okay. Um, so, what were you saying, Carl? They, so, they, I suggest start with the electrical because the plan that the trustees have been talking about is trying to get the heating, the small amount of plumbing work and the electrical work done first. So everything, a lot's done, and then the general contractor should come in. So that's how these things fit together. That's, that's why I suggested talk about the electrical work first here tonight. Sounds good. Okay. And so for the, um, you have three parts to this um, overall document. The general specifications or instructions to bidders. She tells them a little bit about what the work is and then how to submit a bid and some of the other like boilerplate kind of terms and conditions. Then the technical specifications, which get into a little more detail about what work has to be done, but not down to uh, you know what size or how many feet of wiring there is. And then the last document is the bid form that the contractors will fill out and return by the bid opening date and time of Wednesday, September 13th at 3 p.m. Then the library trustees will um, look at the bids, especially Crystal, and um, at their meeting on the 20th, we'll consider it and act on a recommendation to the select board. And then on the 25th of September, the select board could award the contracts for both the electrical work and the general contractor services. Can you say the, sorry, can you say the, the dates again? So you meet when, Jessica? 20th. So we bumped our meeting back a week, so it would be the 20th. Um, so it would be the oh, you're week instead of the okay. second week. That's where I was last. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Because it doesn't make sense to have everyone meet when we go home. Okay. We don't have the information. That makes sense. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so for the um, the work, uh, this is a result of conversations with some of well all the um, library trustees at one meeting, and then Jessica and Crystal and Jean at another meeting at the library building. So looking at the technical specifications, the big thing is moving the panel from the basement up to the first floor. They've selected a place in what I'll call the back left-hand corner to walk in the building back, back left corner, which is now a young adult's room, right? Um, and they're also aware that they're going to talk to the village about moving the meter up also because it's presently just below the first floor level yeah. so we want to get want to get that so up the meter line. pack actually flooded mm -hmm. the meter pack actually flooded mm -hmm. yes. yeah can i in the basement uh, basically you'd be putting back everything that the way that it is, except uh, we did add in that would be uh, LED light fixtures going forward rather than probably fluorescent is what was there. But everything else that we got with some light fixtures would remain the same. 
put all new wiring to the switches, lights, and that was. Upstairs, um, the lights do not need to be replaced, unlike downstairs. But wiring may need to be changed out. And so we're you know, planning for that, and all the outlets will go back in where they are right now. Um, the outside lights would be rewired if needed, and there, there might be some more rewiring has to be done because of moving the panel. The trustees also want to move the hot water heater from the basement area upstairs to the toilet room. They want to put in a small uh, on-demand electric hot water heater, so the electrician has to provide wiring to allow for that, but that actual installation of that will come through the general contractor's work. Mm -hmm. um, so, in and on this, um, they were stating that, uh, that we want them to give a, a time that they could start and how many weeks they think it'll take. And we're suggesting that that be a consideration in awarding the bid. So if there's a $450 difference in price, let's say, but somebody's bid it's $450 more than the lowest and get the work done three months sooner, mm -hmm. yeah. be money well spent in our opinion. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then you'll find all those kind of things listed on the bid form, the lump sum amount for materials and labor, <coughs> expected start date, number of weeks to complete. We are asking for references from three previous customers. <coughs> and then the rest is just them signing off. Okay, Kristen wants to say something. Hold on one second. Um, Can we give her a ride up here, Mark? She should just say it in chat. Yeah. I don't know if you can, if you've switched around. So my understanding is that the town village is going to tell us where they can move the meter, um, which is sort of dictated to where electric is coming into the building, which is also going to tell us where we can put the meter on the first floor. Um, the meter or the entrance panel? Okay, meters outside. Which is, in, you know, important to us to figure out the rest of electrical stuff. That's my understanding. Jean, Jean Hall is going to It sounds like Jean, okay, so in case you couldn't hear Jessica, Jean has already reached out to the village to ask that question about the placement on the side. Yeah. Okay. Which hopefully okay. will then allow you to put the entrance panel where you want. Not so you can. It would, you just wire to it. Yeah, you just wire to it. Well, enough money, you can do anything. Oh my gosh, okay. That's true, we can kind of do it under the library and come up the back side. Okay, but we're not. Around, so it's all good. Anyway, any other any questions on this for anybody okay. <laughs> that matters? Yep. Yeah, okay. So, on on the technical specifications, it talks about first floor outlets and lights. <clears throat> I would like to at least suggest the possibility of adding an alternate. Um, this says no additional lights will be needed or planned. Wiring to existing outlets will be replaced. Uh, my, my concern is that if we have a flood event again um, and the wire gets exposed, the wiring gets exposed, it'll have to be ripped out and replaced. So the alternate I would suggest would be having the wiring run um, you know, up through a channel and down to the outlets so that they, and to have them off the floor a bit so that they would not be submerged in the case of a 
another flood event. Why don't we just have it wired in MC? We never have to replace it. If pallet, coated, wire it. I don't know what that is. Is that flood it's, resistant? Pop the ceiling up here. It'll be here. Yeah. It's it's the it's the cardboard. Like coil. It's the yeah. cardboard wrap that's around the ground wire that wicks that water up in Rolex. Rolex right. <clears throat> is for houses, not for commercial buildings. It's just cheaper. So commercial buildings for less than forty five standard occupants, you can get away with it. If you wire it in MC, uh, which is just I don't know, it's you're still your hot neutral and ground. A but there's no metal paper gland that's kind of <coughs> I don't know how you explain it better, but you're doing well. <laughs> yeah. So that way you don't have to replace it at all next to floods. So who cares where they're located? You have to replace the outlet. Yeah. No wire. A box. Okay. You take the paper out of the equation. Yep. It's a good thing we got our floods only administrator well, here. Our shit officer here. If that if that'll <coughs> you know pass the straight face test in terms of flood resiliency at some point. R right now, the, the outlets, if I remember correctly, are up basically on the floor. Is that? You know, honestly, I think that, yeah, I think they're within the first three feet, because um, yeah. I'm trying to get back to selling programs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were, they were built yeah. into the <clears throat> into the shelving, and I think they were literally. We were thinking that down, we're talking about the downstairs one specifically. The upstairs were definitely built into the shelving. Right. Here before. Yeah. Um, but thinking. I'm sorry, I'm thinking we're still on the, the basement level. Um, yeah, I'm thinking first floor because that okay. that wiring got wet yeah, and it needs did. to be pulled and stripped and replaced. So I don't I don't know if it's possible to get those outlets a little bit higher. So nothing would have to be done. It would all depend on ADA compliance and how their shelving is because as soon as you move it, the triggers being compliant <clears throat> and probably behind books. Not a plot. I'd leave them where they are and just use <coughs> or add extra. <laughs> leave them where they are well, and, well, and use the coated wire. But, but where there. they are was built into the into the shell. I understand. It's existing. <coughs> the shell is not there anymore. It's existing, not <coughs> in the box. It's gone. Can I? Can uh, I? Got stripped out. We did save it though, and the hope is that we can use some of that same wood and shelving. Oh. It's been moved out of the, the old uh, lumber mill. I don't know. I guess I guess I would specify using MC cable or EMT and THHN yeah. instead of Romex. No Romex mod. Okay, hold hold that thought. And my other. Hold that thought, Crystal. Crystal, what do you want to say? Ready. So not all of the outlets are in the base boards. <clears throat> the conversation has been <clears throat> that it might be really difficult to find the base boards that have been cut out to fit those outlets. And potentially they get moved above that height. Um, as far as ADHD and all of those compliances, we we have to adhere to that. She's just saying that he knows that there's. They can move. I don't care. Well, if if we're making okay. that contingent on meeting code, does feel like there's for it too? Yeah. But I think your idea of the type of wiring is reasonable to specify that it not be Romex. Can I get to my other question now? Yeah. You cut me off. Go. I have a question. Those are all lots managed, I have to tell you. Well, we're like your favorite Okay, go. What do you got? What do you want? Go. The bidding and billing, or uh, billing and payment, is a little bit confusing for me, because it says it will be in a lump sum, and then it says the town will consider making a partial payment up front. And then it asks for bills to be submitted every two weeks and guarantees their payment in 17 days. Net 30, net 60 is a lot more standard than 17, but if we're doing lump sum, why are we doing a two payment? And then you're turning in a progressively built job. 
a lump sum was intended to distinguish from a, like a unit price basis format or contract. Um, so we don't have that. We don't have an amount per output installed or an amount per book of cable. So, so the job won't be built in a lump sum. Right. No, yeah. the bid will be in a lump sum. Bid, bid is lump sum. Okay. okay. So, yeah, okay. I think those are. And what is the bidding crystal? The contractors get some payment as we were moving through the <coughs> because they might, you know, they might need some payment to pay for materials and labor instead of waiting until the end and having one one check for the total job. And she could comment on that. I would just make our terms in right. the thirty or next and that sixty, and not even mention up front payment. They want it. They're gonna. Plan, they're going to build 30 days ahead and probably we won't know materials not there and we'll pay it anyways. Maybe that's just a personal feeling. Uh, Tim, can you mute again? So I would consider my history with contractors or in general contractors is that they are going to want something up front whether it's a material cost or a labor cost to secure their work. Um, at which point in time um, we give them a payment and then as work progresses, we can move forward. Um, but I've never heard of a contractor just showing up with no payment, no guarantee of that well, the guarantee is the contract. Hold on, she came for you. Good. The guarantee is the contract. So, if you just make your terms net 30, they order materials, they bill for them. They get paid within 30 days, their bill comes within 30 days. It's a lot. I think it's different when you have a homeowner or a, a residential, whether it be commercial or not, than having a town entity where you're used to getting bids and contracts. Yeah. I don't know. <coughs> I guess if they specified MC, whatever. I can, I can see the, the I don't think there's any harm in having the wording in here that <clears throat> they, the town could consider making a partial upfront payment if the contractor doesn't request it. <clears throat> we don't have to ask. I have a feeling like it's going to be hard to get a contractor, period. Um, and the yeah. smaller contractors might be more inclined to want that initial payment up front to cover their, you know, cover their material costs. I don't know. What? I will not approve giving money to a contractor for them to order material. It does not guarantee the town that the material is even ordered or shows up. Then we have to go fight on the other side if it's a flop. I'm not saying it will be, but like they order material, they bill for material that day. We pay within 30 days, just like their bill is. This is very standard practice in commercial construction. I've, I've never gotten a nickel before I showed up at a job. Maybe it's just a personal feeling. I but I won't support putting, at this point, taxpayers' money in potential jeopardy. I'm not saying it will be in the end. I totally that. hear you. On any. <laughs> I tend to agree with you. If it was something, if it was like me doing something personally. Right. If it's a professional contractor that's reliable and consistent, this won't be a problem. That's, yeah. Right. That's what I was thinking. If it's somebody who always runs behind, it might be a problem. Is that who we want to hire even though there's a contractor shortage? So you're making a motion to amend the RFP to include 
the, up the, the waterproof wiring, MC wiring, and <coughs> to um, make payment within 30 days. Payment terms, net 30. Net 30. Net 30. Before we, before we move on that, I have one question on the warranty. And it's a question, Evan, you probably know, is if this is looking at a four year um, warranty period. Is that a, is that a standard? Vermont warranty? state laws one. I mean, four, I'd one love one. to get a four year warranty, but it seems. Uh, I mean, I've seen it and you carry extra money for that warranty and nobody can after ever come after you for it because for Vermont state laws one year. <clears throat> so I, it's FEMA reimbursable, sure. We pay extra money for comfort on paper. I wonder if there's anything in FEMA requirements on this kind of thing. The four year? Yeah, on no, the warranty okay, at all. input from the library. So you're I saying- I didn't actually make a motion, but Mark did put that right in there. No, I'm just Kevin, trying to say that trying to make this <laughs> state law meeting sets sure. the rules that it's one year and, and the owner and the contractor can't agree to more if they want. If they could. That's a minimum. But if it's, well, it's one court. Right. Yeah. It's going it's to issue. court. So if you have an issue with an outlet and somebody doesn't want to honor it after 365 days, we want to pay a thousand dollars to our lawyer to go after a thirteen dollar outlet. If there's no point in carrying more than a one year warranty. Or are we even going to remember there's a warranty three years down the road? Is it going to be the same select board, the same trustee board? Probably not. Um, Jessica, I mean, I would be fine just, <coughs> I, I'm not, I don't remember that part of the conversation, so I would be fine just putting it where what the state law is in you know, one year. It's reasonable. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail sooner. What happens is two years down the road, a mouse chews the wire and you call them for warranty you to build it. Because it's 368 days, but. Oh! Okay. Um, so, is are we motioning here on this one? Do I don't we, know. Do we need to make a motion or do we <coughs> suggest, Carl, that this, we approve this RFC or whatever? I think given the timeline, there needs to be a motion so this can be I sent agree. out. We just need to not, yeah, not to say. I agree. Motion to make all the changes requested? All the changes means the uh, warranty period of one year, uh, payment terms net 30, and requiring MC cabling. Romex not allowed. Requesting MC cabling, but Romex not allowed. And second. Any discussion? Scott. So, the magic question, though, I could be the thorn in your side. With the application for uh, the flood zoning permit, is this building historic and not substantial enough in cost for it's exempt from this piece of paper? Mm -hmm. I don't recall from looking at that map that I told you about that Rebecca had that the library is the um, contributing structure in the historic district. Okay. So it's not subject exactly. to the substantial damage. Because what I'm hearing for all these ideas, they're on par with this document anyway, with the exception of the seller, and I haven't heard that proposal yet. But yeah. the seller, the base, of the uh, and I suspect that the total damage is not is not sorry. doesn't exceed fifty percent. But <clears throat> I don't know that for sure. That's um, a good point. No, it's a good question. The other thing that in one of the many tours, many tours, I'm sure they're not over. Um, I think it was the EDA person, I'm pretty sure he was the one, who made a comment like, oh, the um, basement's going to have to be filled. I don't know that the basement has to be filled, but I just want to say that just so you know, there are mitigation discussions around filling basements. So I want to say it now so that it's on your radar now. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to, and no one has to do anything. It's just something that comes up in mitigation. And on our own in house in town zoning, it calls not for filling, but you can flood proof your foundation where it doesn't take on water. You just need to have a PE blessed so you don't implode your basement. You know, I do know that a number of years ago there was a study undertaken 
relative to the height of a flood door in the basement level. Now, if that were completely filled in and it was no longer a door and the windows were filled in, that might change the dynamic of that study considerably. But definitely something that should be considered. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you gonna vote for your own? Oh, that yeah, sure, I was reading, sorry. Here. Let's hear it. Do you wanna hear me read? I want to hear you say yes. Yes. You're voting. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, John, I get to with him. We do too. <laughs> Wasn't okay. much flood, fun before me, though? Okay. Library flood repair is the general contractor version. Yes, yeah, so uh, the instructions to the bidders are basically the same there. Uh, and then the technical specifications is organized by type of work being done. And then you can see there are 11 different the work, types of work to be done. Um, the last one, number 11, resetting furniture is something they would do basically as they're going out the door. But, so uh, just to acquaint you with what's going on there, uh, <coughs> the building had blown in insulation work done until recently. I don't know if that meant last year sometime or- Weeks before the flood. Just weeks, weeks before the flood. <laughs> oh, <God>. And when- <coughs> The wains coating and uh, shelving were removed. Uh, baseboard, it allowed that insulation to fall out. Oh. The um, Surf Pro did try to contain it. Um, but at yeah, a minimum, you have that, that gap. And I put in here three to four feet, plus or minus. I'm trying to recall what I saw there. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. But the library also wants the contractor to go up in the um, attic and check to see if there's if the insulation has settled. If it has, it needs to be refilled um, so you don't have 80% of each um, gap in between studs um, filled with insulation. So did they pump it down from the attic? Yeah. Good. Now's the time to get rid of loan and insulation. <laughs> Strip the walls and spray foam it off. Yeah. You need a lot of extra work for spray foam. <coughs> the building would have to have a bed. Otherwise, you're going to be living in the beer cooler. Mm -hmm. A little wet. ERD. Sheet rock work, it's, a, it's the spot repairs that might be needed because of the electrical work and other work like that upstairs, but most of the sheet rock work is going to be downstairs uh, because of it being flooded, had to be removed, so it's listed out there along the stairwell to repartition the activity room, and then behind the activity room in what I think I refer to here as a um, furnace utility space. There's a, a small uh, enclosure around the water meter. And the library trustees have asked that that be sheetrock. And then a painting of that activity room um, needs to be scraped and then painted. The Wayne's coating, as Jessica said, was salvaged. It's in storage. And uh, the plan is to reuse that to the extent possible, starting first in the two front rooms, the two big rooms. And then what I wrote in there was that after those two rooms are done, then the amount of Wayne's coating left would be assessed to see how far it would go in the children's room. And if it's only enough to do four feet, then they probably would call it off. Not, but if it's enough to do one of the three walls, then maybe they would have one wall done with that whole means code. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, the contractor would have to um, propose a finish 
I'm sorry, a product or, or substitute for the wainscoting and also the finish that would go on it. So you would be able to pick like the stain color that would be on there. For bookshelves, that's a very similar situation. The material was saved, it's in storage, and that would go in uh, basically in front of the wainscoting around the, the two front rooms and then the two back rooms, the children's room and the young adults room, there is some existing shelving that would be installed and then there might have to be some uh, adjustments made once uh, the library sees how things are going back together. The sliding doors uh, separating the, the right front room from the children's room will not uh, close now, so they're up in the wall just playing around with them quickly we couldn't get them to pull out so we're asking the contractor to look at that and not necessarily saying they have to be repaired so that they close but at least while the contractor is there have them look at it maybe they can suggest something for making those doors work again is it just because they've swollen up you think it might be it also might be that some insulation at some point has fallen behind and right now everything's stripped back so you can actually see behind the doors so now is the ideal time for somebody to uh, at least look at it so you can actually look in the wall that the door is in and yeah. you don't think it's muck i don't think it's muck but i don't know for sure mm -hmm. but they weren't working yeah. like that before the flood correct and that's my understanding yeah, that would be interesting to know. I don't know if I they, want to know. They were probably open for 50 years and never closed. I've never seen them closed. Weren't you around when those were installed? I was. Okay. All right, baseboard um, is very similar to I the wings coating on the shelves. It was salvaged and um, <coughs> intended to be reused. And it was noted that some of the outlets, at least some of them, uh, were installed in the baseboard. So we asked the contractor to try to put them back, pieces of baseboard back where they were so that they match up with the outlets rather than taking the piece, cutting it, and then realizing that, well, that wasn't the right piece to go there and, and end up with waste. But we are putting the outlets back? On the baseboard? I don't understand. Well, the That's conversation the started before, and I thought that the it ended up, yeah, just leave them where they, they were. But or I guess the reason for putting them in the baseboard is they're below the shelves. If you raise them up, then they're in the shelves behind the books. Right. So in order to use them, somebody would have to know, have an idea where the outlet is and then move books out of the way. Plug into an outlet. That's why I don't want to use draw max again because an outlet replacement is key. Yeah, you I like it when they stay where it. they are. Yeah, I think keep keep the integrity of the building as much. As, it sounds like that's what you're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, wainscoting I'm, the bookshelves, keep the outlets where they are, just use the. We've had Vermont Preservation Trust come through twice. Um, they came through when Zerb Pro was still there and said, you really should try to salvage as much as possible because this is historical. And, right. and then they did have another team that came back um, I believe last week um, and or the week before. And I wasn't able to be there for that one, so I don't know the direct content. But um. are, they, are they going to ask you to replaster or allow sheetrock? Or? Not that I know of. Yeah. I've not heard that they're asking us to replaster. It's, it's not actually on the historical registry, um, so I believe we have a little bit more flexibility of what we can do in the building than if it were on the historical registry. It is a historic building, um, and so we should try to maintain the integrity of it. Did they take out when they gutted things above the wainscoting? No. No. So who cares what's behind the wainscoting? Not me. It can be sheetrock for all I care. Yeah. Plastic. Yeah. Plastic. Exactly. Plus, that's a cool alternative. Okay. Yeah. 
So I think it's great to put them back where they belong or where they originally were, if that meets code. Um, if it doesn't meet code, then I think perhaps there should be some caveat in the bid specification that says code permitting or something of that nature? Well, I think the thing is, Duncan, <coughs> is that are they grand, first thing is to find out, are they grandfathered in right where they are? That's the option I like. Well, they're not there. At least the ones behind the They're not shell. there, but they were there. I would let the, the electrical part go first, like Carl was saying, because <coughs> you're going to have a licensed electrician anyway. Yeah. They're not going to wire a building that's not up code. And they're going to know that because their name is on it and it's their license in jeopardy. Yeah. And we have asked for the work to be done to meet the current code recognized in Vermont. Yeah. Okay. That's like it. If that yeah. is going to do a state con yeah. contradiction to the current code here, then they'll tell us and we'll have to find another plan. The one thing I'm kind of generally worried about with all of these is n number one, I'm not seeing anything that says the town has the right to accept or reject any or all bids. I think that's standard language that ought to be in here. Um, without that, I think we're potentially letting ourselves open to having ex having to accept a low bid or a bid that we don't want to accept. Um, so I think that language really needs to be in both of these um, technical specs. Um, the other Isn't thing there I wonder, a flutter? What's we, that? Isn't there a flutter that we had at a lunch of? No, but a flutter's a great idea. I thought there was um, There was a bid that we sent out that had a bunch of stuff at the end. Yeah, probably. The other thing I'm kind of generally worried about is these days, there's a, if you get a, if you get a contractor who is looking at this spec and sees holes in it, they're going to submit a low bid and then they're going to submit requests for change orders. And the change orders are going to eat us alive. And I don't see, it, it's, you know, it's kind of the, it's kind of a problem of putting together a detailed spec versus asking for a proposal. Because what, I, what I'm seeing in here is a potential, like with the shelving and stuff, there's a, there's a lot of room for a contractor to say, oh, well, you know, my original bid was X, but you know, really it needs to be Y because unexpected circumstances and I'm putting in a request for a change order and those change orders could just decimate the original. Yep, so what do we do about what well, language do you want? This I don't is know. All, this is all FEMA reimbursable. Yeah. Well, it, is it? Um, what I'm insurance saying. first and how much is insurance going to pay? Is insurance going to pay to put it back like it was? Do we have, do we have any knowledge yet as to what the we don't know yet how much they'll pay. Yeah. But they did have flood insurance. Well, they had insurance. So we have building insurance. insured. And the yeah, passive. The DLCC passive policy has a provision to pay a certain amount of money per event, not just for the, each individual member, but for all members. So it, it depends on how many other communities request money, and then how much of that uh, amount that the uh, passive has could come to Johnson. It's so good news it wasn't flooding throughout the whole state. Right. Still, there's going to be a still? lot of people. I was being sarcastic. Well, yes, that is good news. And then some of the members who had flooding didn't have building damage like this. They just had road and culvert and bridge damage. So, you know, might, might have a pretty good sum of money. I don't know what it would be. And our insurance coverage also depends on when, with passive, you have an, op, an option of selecting 
whether you're going to do replacement value, whether you're going to do an agreed upon value. I, I don't know what we had that. Yeah, we had that long for. discussion in, was it this time last year? Probably. Do you remember when we actually asked for other bidders? Last year, you probably would have done that around um, October, November was of it? last year. And yeah. then you made a decision in, in December of last year to stay with passage. Correct. But the actual um, passive spreadsheet that shows the buildings that are covered and the values agreed upon, they might be different by building. And I'm just not sure whether we did an agreed upon cash value. Uh, you know, or replacement cost. a replacement cost value. I don't, I don't, I don't not, know. Not to cut it off, because very good point. I generally agree with you that this is a perfect change order to death project. You could change order it to profitability. The trustees are the ones that put it together. I don't want to rewrite the whole thing. Yeah, I, I don't either. I'm just, I'm, I'm bringing it up for awareness as much as anything. Um, Expect you know, change orders, gotcha. It's, it seems to me that this is... I didn't like in the electrical one, but it doesn't, like, I get that change orders happen, but it spells the process out really easily. This reads like, ah, oh, we expect change orders. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that there's trying to be flexibility in terms of putting the old, <coughs> the old stuff back, and I fully support the idea of trying to put it back, but you could drive a truck through a lot of that. Um, built, built in flexibility. Yeah, I, t I understand that. So we want, we want it put back historically correct. You can drive a truck through that because they're going to go pull out old wainscoting and we don't know what it's going to be like and it's going to, and the contractors, I don't know, how, how do you get around that? You don't. Uh, yeah, I guess my concern though is that at the end of the day, you know, we've got sort of competing interests here. We've got a library board of trustees who has, you know, some responsibility for this, but the town, it's a town building which the town is paying the insurance on. I guess I don't want to get left Okay, so what do you want to do? Uh -huh. You've made that point very clear. I just uh -huh. don't know. Uh -huh. You don't know what you want to do. Okay. Uh -huh. is there, yeah, I mean, okay. is there any specific... Your confusion is clear to me. <laughs> is there any specific that, language we can no, add that's... to this that would alleviate your heartburn? You could take a different approach to it, which would be to have the contractor submit a proposal with general guidelines as, to, as opposed to having a set of technical specifications that they respond to. What if we said that any incidental or unrealized work beyond $1,500, if ever, is, must go through an approval? Well, I think I there think there is an approval process in here. Yeah, yeah but I'm just saying pick a limit, and then at that limit, <coughs> we're talking about. What about just saying, Jessica. Uh, short, sorry. No, she's right. She does cut me off when okay. it's needed. But. Um, I wonder, because I have the same thought of, you know, if this wood doesn't go back in, and then they have to get the materials for the back rooms, but they've, they've kind of done their bid on being able to use the materials through the whole building, like, do we ask them to bid out those back rooms as if they're new materials. So we're trying to save the, and, and ultimately the goal is to do as much historical integrity as possible. We definitely want the front rooms with historical integrity, but then then we're comparing, you know, then we're not hitting that road bump, right? You, you just, know, but I don't know how that works. You just do an control. alternate, you know, you would say, this is the intent of the project to restore to what it was before. We have pictures and we do walk through in your request for proposal, you request an ad alternate room number three supply Wayne's coating. And that's kind of an all or nothing, right? You get there and you say, well, we don't have enough material. Yes, they already have it. 
quoted what they need to order. Or you say, well, we had enough, so we don't need to accept the ad. But there's seven ways to skin a cat. Yeah. And I still don't understand that expression. I don't think you should skin a cat at all. Right? I agree. It's a terrible expression. Uh, but, you know, this is what is presented. So I guess I share feelings. And depending on the contractor, yeah, we might see a lot of large change orders. Can I ask a question? Is the wings going down or is it still up? It's down. We had to it's go all the way back. It's good. Okay, it's good. It's, it's in fairly good really like shape. It's not all cracked and marred and damaged. Some pieces broke when it came out, is my understanding. So the wainscoting that's up um, because it's old, is that wainscoting now available? There's no wainscoting up. It's all Well, no, no, no. The, wain the wainscoting that came down, the ones that are damaged, is this unique wainscoting where you can't go to a lumber mill and get the wainscoting? You can't get the species of lumber because it's chestnut. Yeah. I'm just no putting on like a carpenter's hat. Well, I guess you could, but it would be You might be really able to get expensive. something that matches. It would have to be torn out of a mill in but there's a change order. Pennsylvania. Right. Okay, so do we want to do that? Do we want to say that we have two options? proposed. One is that you have alternate costs if there are suspected areas and the other is that we just put a cap on changes. Are you guys trying to hit the same deadline with this because it looked like not? Well, that yes and no. Like obviously the electrical needs to go in first but we don't want to delay this very long. So um, and I believe it, Carl recommended that we have it itemized versus just leaving it open so that way we were comparing apples to apples versus versus one contractor has this vision and one has that vision so carl recommended that we have this list of specs so and part of that thinking is with the amount of work that's available you ask a contractor to sit down and think all this through like we've been doing and reduce it to writing they're going to look at it and say I got other work over here I can do. I'm going to get contracted a lot easier than all the effort. Then we go into answering Johnson's request to write out a proposal in detail. Gotcha. So to answer your question, we could move on the electrical and then if there's work that needs to be done on this one, as long as we can move it. And put get it back on the agenda in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> that one could potentially wait because the electrician's going to need to do the work first, regardless. So that would give us a little possibility. If there's major changes that we need to make. I mean, the other thing is that we are getting into colder weather. You do have insulation problems, very specific insulation. Yeah, it might not be wise to push this out. I would be amendable, I guess, to a approve this, um, changing the warranty period to one year and the uh, payment terms to net 30. Uh, to net 30. Um, understanding that there's potential risk. Is that a motion? <clears throat> yeah. Did you get that as a motion, Donna? No, nope, sorry. Thank you, you want to add in that paragraph in the uh, general ins instructions about um, town's rights to um, accept or any bid or re reject any or all bids? I, I would l like it if that could be on both. Yes. Um, and actually, I would really like it if Beth and or I could look at a previous proposal that we wrote because wrote, there was a couple other things that we were including in not a lot of our RFPs. Can the right to reject any and all bids. Recall what item or what contract? I'm looking. I think we included like the inclusivity statement and a couple other things. Yeah, I don't remember that. Uh, but they're not all coming fresh to my mind. And Crystal would recommend that we put the town's inclusivity statement as part of the, the RFP. But the order in which the other ones were, I think, if we just stay consistent. Like it was like the town of Johnson. So do you want to just say okay? So as part of your did you did you start a motion? No. Yeah. Um. 
I think maybe it's part of I was going to second it, but it got a little muddled. What were you saying, that? I was going to say, you could say, and standard RFP language at the end as standard RFP okay. language. Um, so my motion is to uh, post the RFP, change of warranty period to one year, change of billing payment um, to net 30, and adding standard RFP language at the end, stating Alan Johnson has the right to refuse any and all bids, plus all the rest. The rest. And all set. And then they're going to put this out and hopefully get three bids. That's the game plan. Yeah, we're going to. If you guys get three bids, like keep all the names, the contractors. It, it's our plan to post it on the public forum. We post it on the newspaper, and there's a, a bidder's page, but also to reach out to local contractors and yeah. provide directly to them as well for both of these. Um, and we have a list of people who have done work in the past. Um, but if you'd like to add people to that, direct outreach, we can do that as well. Should we have it posted on the a website like Works in Progress? Or? I'm not familiar with Works in Progress. I don't think there'll be interest, but it doesn't take much to post it. Yeah, right? so it, it probably won't, but I think it might help with the straight face test of attempting to find three bids. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Carl, I think you can help with that. Right? Do you guys ever go through for the AGC and ask them? Because they have the Richard Wally? Yeah, well, or somebody else in that organization. <laughs> Anyone which is else awesome too, but you're just awesome. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna recommend AGC. What is that stand for? Associated General, General Contractors. Contractors. It's like a really exclusive club. Yeah. That anybody can be a part of whatever they want. If you pay. If you yeah. All right. I think you could post. Plus jobs without being a member, can't you? I can't believe it. I mean, we must. This must be a word that's been invented many times. Okay, we have a motion and a second, right? Any discussion? You seconded. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed? Are you going to vote? Are you abstaining? Are you, you can vote a poll against it, It's not a proper thing for an abstention. It doesn't really. I was going to wait to see what you said about it. So. <coughs> uh, the I'll, I'll say yes. Rock, I'm going to rock it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Put the R next. Reluctantly, your vote counts as an I. Got it. Uh, I. <laughs> so it's unanimous. <laughs> Uh, reluctantly, I'm getting this. I've been there myself. Okay, discuss plan for. Really? Wait, like, can I ask you a question? The, the language about having a right to reject any and all bids and other standard stuff, like your motion was just to add that to the second one, but do you want to make a motion to add it to the first I one? I would like to motion adding it to the electrical permit as well. And I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That was an easy one. Okay. It's a good thing we have Donna. Somebody. Yes, thank you, Donna. I was thinking that earlier plan. and then I completely forgot. Okay, discuss plan for holding flood, flood response debriefing. Can we just stop talking about floods? Oh my gosh. No. That's our meeting. That's what we got. Can we do it in like October when there's a little bit of downtime? <laughs> no. Yeah, the no, more no. time that goes by, the less. Uh, correct will be. So I have a wildly possibly popular or unpopular idea for this. Um, being that it's planning for a meeting, could we, certain select board members, all of us maybe even get together and discuss events, get a flow diagram and then do a public meeting instead of trying to arrange everything in a public meeting wasting the public's time because it is all technically planning for a meeting which wouldn't violate open meeting law. I, I don't know. Sorry, when we say debriefing, this is what we were talking about as far as 
updating the public on no, no? am i okay. i mean it, that is a part of it but it, we have to document everything that happened right. like we need to sit in a room and it's not going to be quick it's going to be long and we have to sit in a room and get everything out but that doesn't that have to be a public hearing or a public i mean that can be that's my one. question no, this would be if, if it's with a bigger town, this might be the staff doing this, yeah. doing a critique, review of the operations and performance during the well, response. Well, 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 so it just so happens that here, a lot of your elected officials fill some of those roles that in other towns are served by staff or citizen volunteers. Yeah. So this is this is for our benefit to try and anticipate things that we might do better in another event. Well, it's that, and we also need to have it for our FEMA documentation. We do. From my yeah. understanding, yeah. we need to have some of it documented for FEMA. Yes, I think I like we talked about before that some of you who were involved in some of those very early actions, like especially the, the um, debris removal, um, if you could jot down your notes about what you did, um, Take care of that in the surf, bro. Uh, I think I don't know this before I got here, so I don't know what happened that you ended up with surf. Yeah, you know, we've been talking a little bit. Something that documents kind of just the full, to the best of everybody's knowledge, combined into one is the hard part. And then in chunks of that, we can talk about room for improvement. You can never predict every natural disaster because they're all different. But if we could have improvements there, in my maybe opinion, the future board would be better served. And <laughs> in my opinion, we need to document the first 48 hours. Like, we just need to sit down and do it. And it has to be you and I at the very least. I was going to say, you and I are the only ones over there. For the first so the first 48 hours. There on my phone. <laughs> Mark, drove Mark. Mark drove in and out. Mark drove six times on Monday night. That's true. But <laughs> we, the first 48 hours is one chunk. And then after that first 48 hours, we do have volunteer hours and things during that first period that we should be submitting to FEMA. So that does count toward it when it comes to like shelter. That's all officials. No, no, no. Not oh. us. No. So th there is and then, a float that the state has used in the past. And for all the terminology, there's a hot wash, which is basically what you're talking about. That's like the name of it. And that's usually a whiteboard or a big board with yellow stickies. And it's like, People put up everything that they did. We usually have somebody facilitating the meeting. And after all that's done, there's an after action report, which is a little bit more methodic. And you look at all the whiteboard or yellow stickies or the incident action stuff that I gave you way back when. And then you put it into a report, everybody agrees on it. And FEMA would understand that terminology. If you're working with FEMA, and you have to deal with those folks. Got you. I don't care about the FEMA part as much as I do about the dump part. Like, yeah. we need to get that dump out because yeah. we can do all that organization at any point later. Okay. Yeah, so Can't the hot wash will happen first. So yeah. you get everything out and you can move things around. I like yellow stickies because you can move around a lot quicker than using a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And then when you're all satisfied, then you sit down and you do your after action report. It's pretty smooth once you get the hang of it. So don't have a lot of and that about it. and that what do you call it, hot wash whatever you want to call it I'm going to call it like we can do that in sections because it was very different for those first 48 hours and it was after those first 48 hours um, but I think we have to do it and with the goal what, the goal being what Beth? doing things better the next time it happens well, well there's two there's no, two I'm goals one is that we need to document the things for FEMA. Well, okay, one is the very first thing is that we need to do it, it so that we get everything out and we don't forget things along the way. Because I've already forgotten things. I've literally had conversations with people and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that happened. So we need to get it out. Goal number one, just get it out. Goal number two, document for FEMA. Goal number three is to learn from it for the future. Okay, yeah. No, that's, that's clarifying because I'm very, I want to be able to say, we're going to be flooded. We have plenty of warning on this flood. It would have been nice to be able well, to. The height. 
We had, I mean, yeah. The height was. We had warning that we were going to fly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It would have been nice to be able to go to and pull a brochure off out of the closet and say, make sure, do this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Order dumpsters, you know, or whatever. Right. Whatever we decide. Or don't. Or don't. But I would suggest taking one of our regularly scheduled flood only meetings and devoting that meeting to putting together this <coughs> three stage yeah. report. We don't really have to record it. We could use the whiteboard and just take a picture at the end. I don't, I'm thinking about Green Mountain ATV. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, we can do that. I mean, my only hesitation with doing that is I would want to start our board meeting earlier because, like, right now, my brain isn't working as well as it was an hour ago. And I'm going to need, like, as we're talking and people are going to be talking around us, I'm going to need to look at the computer throughout. But if, it's, if that's the only agenda item for that meeting, awesome. I don't think we'll finish it, but yeah. we can start it. It could be a good start. I don't, I don't think I could get it out like timestamps and everything because some things tied to emails, some tied to phones. We'll talk through part of it and then we're going to fill in gaps. That's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's all and of that stuff. Filling in can the gaps is going to take time. All of the specifics mm -hmm. can be filled in later. I think it's just, you know, communicated. The specifics with... won't get filled in later. We can't delay that part of it. Like, we just need to think about, like, it just needs to be thought through well in terms of facilitating, having people working behind the scenes as as we're, like, verbalizing somebody's going and looking at the website, timestamp in the backward history, the version history, and just verifying, and somebody's looking at the um, alerts we're getting from NOAA, and, like, that kind of a thing. We're going to need hands in saying, I found this. What does this mean? And then we talk about it and put it out. But like filling in the details after the fact, I don't think will work. I think we need to fill them in during the conversation. Would it be helpful if I gave you a couple of after action reports so you can see what they look like? Sure. They're in public domain. I mean, they're state property, but it's everybody. If you want to, I'm actually not worried about the activity. Like. For me, I just want to make sure we're committing the time to do it. I don't have a problem doing that hot wash, like the actual activity of it. Yeah. I just want to commit to it because, like, I understand the time that's going to go into it. It's not going to be short. Yeah. It's For not those hot washes, it was nothing but that. There's no other yep. talk. Really. Exactly. Exactly the event. Yeah. I'm speaking for a part of ignorance here. How detailed does or do you feel this report? To FEMA needs to be. Do mean, you need to say at 4:57 we did this, at 5:07 we did this? Um, For the first 48 hours, I'd like to have general like hour. Within this hour, at 10 o'clock ish, this happened. Personally, I would like to because it'll help me connect dots. Um, once we get beyond the 48 hours period, though, no, I think just like day of we organized Casella dumpster here. If they picked up three times, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I think that would Are you including the fire department's work on this? Because they were active within the, very active within the first 48 hours. I think with the first well, 48 hours, we, we should Beth, get it all. Beth and I talked earlier, for you. Uh, well, earlier, it be last week, about trying to include a report from the fire department as well as a report from the sheriff's department. Right. Um, kind of bring all and them's actually well, I made th three calls just to the shelter here um, but honestly the sheriff's department would have all of that um, they should through dispatch all, all three emergency services but some of that FEMA paperwork they might be asking how many rescues did you do what time of day was it you know all that was anybody injured were there any illnesses reported which we have that report already. Right. And that's why it's important to have public safety brought in the Sheriff's Department, Fire Department, because they should have that information. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something that Ron does as a... Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm honestly summer. not really worried about their reports for that reason, because it's already documented. Yeah. They've done it. They do it as part of their practice. 
Uh, the only thing that we might need to say very specifically is the point of time, which is probably in the reports too, I don't know, I haven't seen them, of when the fire department had to evacuate, because RJ said it got a little hairy there when they're, they had to change systems. Was it 351? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I think I pulled into the municipal building at 351 with Rosemary. It, it was, they were, they were leaving around the same time I was about to I'm not going to call them up too long after that. You're welcome. You called around five. Five. Four, five. Five. Before four. it was three thirty, quarter four. I was sleeping. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Um, so devoting a flood meeting. Yeah, that would be fine. So does does that make sense to devote one of our flood related meetings to just that? Limit limit the <laughs> limit the agenda items to. Are there any? Yeah. So we have the 11th as our regular meeting, which always has flood topics, which means that the 18th but, would be the flood, flood meeting. What? But we're kicking our regular meeting by a week. I know. That's the 11th. Is the no, regular our regular meeting would be the 4th. Yeah, but we're not. canceled. Yeah. Right. So Everyone's that's following. becoming the 11th. So the 11th is not a flood meeting anymore. Correct. Right. That's our regular. Maybe it took me a second long. Like five seconds. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, the 11th will be our regular meeting, and then the 18th will be our flood meeting, and the 25th will be our regular slash flood meeting. Mm. Um, More meetings. I've done a lot of these post incident after action things. We're going to have a start. I think you're going to need two. two facilitators? Uh, maybe, two. depending on Two meetings, you mean? Oh, we're definitely going to do it. There's no doubt about it. Are you going to three? That's not what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, unpacking everything into the kind of detail that's going to come to light and just all of the things of the day, especially now that it's been over a month. Um, yeah, it's going to at least do this. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we'll have the meeting on the 25th. Yeah. Didn't want to hear that. I know. I'm not here just to tell you the things you want to hear. <laughs> Well, you should be. <laughs> uh, I agree with you, Jeff. It's going to be more interesting. Are, are you volunteering to help facilitate one of these? I'm or? happy to help facilitate. <laughs> well, whatever I can do to help. Oh, Carl's writing your name down. No getting out of it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess tentatively. Tentatively the 18th. 18th. Who are the other um, members of the public that we should make sure of this? I, I'm thinking. Like Matt Kinney, I know, is someone that we're going to want to make sure is there, but is there I don't else? know if they need to be there for the first one. But yeah, they need to be there for the first 48 hours, Eric, but they will have to. Eric, Eric will have there's to. There's members there. of the trustee board who are members, yeah. members of the general public, but are elected officials, too, so it depends on where you classify them. In the town. And Eric. Um, Possibly. Eric Bailey Public and Eric Osgood, we did call in the middle of the night, too. Yeah, Jason Owens, our supervisor. Why are you smiling? Because I just love floods, and I love debris. It's like, when I um, ran for the select so board, I wanted, now, I wanted to talk about floods so much when I ran for the select board. Um, so, Okay. Three years. Too. Okay, the 18th. Check, and we need to invite a bunch of people. And and uh -huh. that doesn't need to be the first one. I agree. Eric Osgood does, though. Eric Bailey does. Um, Rosemary, if we can get her. If she can't, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, RJ, I mean, we should ask him if he wants to. We have his report, so I don't know if he needs to for that reason. Jason, we do need to come. I would suggest that we should, should ask there. Roger if he wants to come also. What? I would suggest Ron should be. Ron should be there. there. Yep, that's a good point. Ken and Linda and Nate. Um, Ken and Nate, yes. But my mother's in the second meeting, I think, yeah. not in the first. Yeah, okay. Um. Marla did come in Marlin. early the next day and work up here. Um, 
Yeah, and we should see if the college wants to be involved. We should give them the option, but Mike might want to. He was really a big help. I, was, I talked to him a lot on Monday before our select board came. Yep. In the library did a lot of prep before. Obviously, yeah. it didn't make a difference, but. Yeah. Um, and Brian actually spent the night in the library. Brian, we talked to all night. Yep. About oh. five in the morning. Yeah, he needed to leave earlier. Huh. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. yeah, Brian needs to be on the list for sure. I think that's the bulk of people anyway. That's most of the. But. The library is actually put most of our stuff in a spreadsheet, so it's easily accessible. Cool, that's great. Nobody did as much prep work as Sterling. Yeah. Didn't work. Ah, uh, Dan Crop, Dan Cop, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know what time he went to Morrisville. He left around nine, nine or ten. Yeah. I think it was later than that. Mm -hmm. Nope, it wasn't. I know it wasn't. It was, it was between nine and ten. I put money on it. You want to put money on it? I'll put money on it. You will? How much? <laughs> this is a public meeting, not getting out of this one. I gotta think about it. <laughs> okay. Um, we can add to the list, but okay, good. that's a good start. 18th, so we'll send an official invite. Okay, flood related reports. Debris pickup, Sterling Market, Municipal Vault, Substantial Damage Determination, FEMA, and other. A debris pickup is scheduled for tomorrow based on notification received today. And we put something on Front Porch Forum, which they released before the usual um, five o'clock or so time. I asked for it to be posted on the town website. Or did you get a chance to put it on Facebook? I haven't been. I left my email at all, so no. Um, and the state um, pickup coordinator has the list of roads where there were properties that were flooded. So we'll drive every one of those roads just in case there's something out. Okay, good. There's a lot of stuff on River Road. A lot. No, because people were expecting something to happen this week, I assume. Yeah. You said you um, communicated with the Ockerleys right now in your email? And directly to them because they called, called the office last week and asked if there's going to be more pickups. There's another woman who's asking for help in the trailer park. She asked this weekend, and I haven't been able to connect. Looking for someone to help move furniture out of her unit and skirting out so there will be more after this. So maybe we can ask the state to do another round <coughs> a week or two. They were asked to do two pickups, one this week and one in two weeks from now. Perfect. Has anybody tried to reach out to the last house on the riverside that has remained shuttered? It was for on sale the for a while. Where? On Route 15? Um, heading yeah. east on the main road, the last house that was for sale that no longer for sale. It hasn't been open. Right past the We Need FEMA. Oh, that's yeah, West. That's that West, okay, yeah. Because I can't even imagine what the inside of that place is. I've like seen right pictures. Now. It's black. But yeah. It's vacant and for sale, as I understand that. <laughs> so for sale, like a property like that that has been gutted, is that still the town's responsibility when they ever do anything with that place to pick up? Well, that place hasn't been gutted. Nothing's no, I know. Right so, away. yeah, that's why it's, it's just sort of frightening to think what's going on in there. At a certain point, it would be it's dilapidated, right? And then yeah, it's fast becoming a teardown. Yeah. I think we're going to have that with quite a few places. 
it's funny. I got um, do do you you know? If, I got a call today from the Secretary of State, who's friend of mine, saying that there's a group of ten carpenters that are looking to come to town. They and work for a nonprofit or for needy people. Yeah. Anybody have any sense of where the carpenters may be needed? That's Ooh. just good one. Ferro <laughs> Street, River Road West. <laughs> Are, are, those, are those people in a place where they actually need, are building back? That's the question. Right. As, as opposed to demolish? As opposed to demolish. I think the Williams house, they have, I think they wanted to get back, well, they might even be back in just living upstairs. They were looking for somebody on the front porch form to redo their basement entry door. And that's the place right past the library. Right, the right behind the library. Not the older place, but the newer place. Uh -huh. This is a non profit group? Are they billing or are they not? They're not billing. Yeah, I think it was a it was a group of carpenters, like an unofficial group of carpenters who are looking to work for right. a non profit group or some other entity that yeah. wants to direct it. their labor. Should you refer them to Moyle County in that way? That's what I was gonna say is they have a better idea of where people are okay. at. And it's, he left a text message from you. It's uwmoyle.org. uwmoyle.org is the website, and there's a volunteer form there. uwmoyle.org. Um, okay, so to, to brief, I got so there's a pickup this week, and then one two weeks from now. This is the plan when I talk to Mr. Young. Was it also going to be on Tuesday, two weeks from now? Or I not? told him that's, that would be best, but I, he didn't commit to that. Okay. Interesting. Um, if it's possible to get more than a couple of days of notice, that would be great. But I think uh, just telling people, I, I've had conversations with people and telling people there will be a couple of pickups has been helpful. So. And then at our last meeting, we talked about putting an end date on that and posting it on Front Porch Forum or our webpage or whatever. Are we still planning on doing that? Yes, we're going to it's from there. So that would be the 18th. Um, yeah, I think we said somewhere mid, I think we said mid September. We didn't say a specific date, but I'm pretty sure we said mid September. And yeah, that second pickup will be mid September. It'll be the week of the 18th. So if we tell people end of day the seventeenth, that should suffice. All right, you know, I was even thinking maybe after this pickup, we can put something on Front Porch Forum just saying, you know, there's going to be one more pickup after this, but that's going to be okay, after that. It's on private landowners to figure it out. I think we just need to say all everything out by the seventeenth and not say how many pickups. And if we have enough that warrants more, we can ask the state. Um, Two weeks from now would be the week of September 11th. Yep. So if they're doing a other day pick tomorrow, I don't know. Yeah. I think we should do the eighth week of the 18th or something. You want more after that? I've been talking to the people riding around and at the FEMA meeting last week telling the people who are asking for support or I know they're still cleaning out their houses, I've been telling them that to haul out till mid-September, mid-September will be the end. Um, so just verbally saying mid-September. So I was talking to Rick Arperley earlier um, this afternoon. And when they gutted their house, they thought they were finished and they had somebody to look at it further and maybe that was the conversation they had. And they're like, yeah, it's still damp, we have to go higher. So I'm wondering is when buildings are starting to go back together and a carpenter goes in and said, yeah, no, we have to tear up more lap and plaster, is that now on the homeowner or can they come back to the town and the town maybe revisit that? I don't know the answer to that. <clears throat> I mean, if they qualify for FEMA individual assistance, uh, which it sounds like it's a homeowner, uh, and the contractor bids the work, 
if they bid it for removing whatever needs to be removed, it'll be part of the price and it'll be reimbursed by FEMA. That's they won't, cost. it's not. <clears throat> well, if it's part of the project cost. It only increases the amount that they'll get paid off. It doesn't count, it does not cover their costs. So I think we just need to be careful about how we're talking about it. Yeah. I'm awesome. just thinking you might have more debris showing up as people try to rebuild their homes. I mean, if yeah. somebody is spending ten thousand dollars, they're not getting ten thousand reimbursed from FEMA. If Correct. they're spending two thousand on debris removal, they're not getting two thousand back from FEMA. Right. But they're getting like a couple hundred back from FEMA. Right. <laughs> like it's not much. So I just so, want to be so FEMA reimbursements only. 20 percent it depends on it depends. what it is, it really and is. yeah it's really low it's, it's really low. variable yeah depends so and it really depends on what it is so that's why i just said that that's all i just want to be clear that it's not we shouldn't say you know we'll reimburse and I mean, make it sound like they're getting their money back because they're not not to be a naysayer but we might not get our money back as well it which is literally just taking the burden of a catastrophically affected area and spreading that cost I get it. among everybody and asking them to bear it. So at what point do we say you you guys have had three months to clean up? It's all been on the dime of everybody else. Do we go for four months? Five I don't three? disagree. I'm just saying <clears throat> that when we're thinking about it, let's think about it properly. I think wasn't that the question? Well, it was just the Second. rebuilding phase because there's so many volunteers working out and getting homes, doing the best that they could think of. No way had moisture meters going. Aha, we've reached the dry spot. It was just sort of feeling it's a damp. No, we're good enough. But when the buildings had a chance to rest for a bit, and there was moisture wicked up into that insulation and some batting, and the, and the carpenters are going in now and looking at it. They're pulling out like insulation that's just covered with mold mm -hmm. and saying, "This you got to go higher in your house." And it is the land, you know it's the landowner's responsibility, yes. But I'm just saying you might have more debris showing up as houses get rebuilt. And I think that's issue. why we need to be clear what the town's responsibility is for pickup yep. and setting a date and sticking to it. Um, I. You know, I'm totally sympathetic to the issues that homeowners are going to face as they make the decision to rebuild or not rebuild. Um, but at some point, I just have a certain amount of heartburn asking all the taxpayers to pick up the cost for that disposal if we're not going to be able to be reimbursed for it. And this is why we, I mean, this is why we're shifting to the state also. Yeah. So the state is bringing it up for us now. So later, would the state do it? I have no idea. Um, would the state do it pick up? They're not going to take household hazardous waste or tires. Mm -hmm. We could probably get somebody to pick the metal up for free, but we are still on the hook monetarily, not completely remote. The nice thing is we're on the hook for the expensive things. Tires aren't cheap here, though. So. Did well. I mean, are we taking it during when the state's coming around at least? Are we leaving them on people's lawns? It's a question yeah, for you. Tires out with their, their flood debris. I'm sure the state would just leave the tires there on the front. There, the state's been very clear tires are not flood related debris. Yeah. yeah I think they a lot of people take advantage of the situation. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the when it's down the river, Kind of is. <laughs> yeah, um, the amount that was there is questionable. But very big data for it. I sent Carl, did you get did, did you get a verification that the state is going to um, be responsible for the tipping fees or the disposal costs also? What was your question, Duncan? I'm sorry. I asked Carl if he was, um, if he had verified whether the state was going to pick up the tipping fees for the pickups that they're doing, and he said yes. So 
so I don't anticipate we'll get a bill for that. Have you guys heard any chatter from the state? I thought I heard something about uh, mobile home um, demolition and removal. The state was trying to come up with something. Am I wrong on that? Have you heard anything like that? Yes, it was part of the $250,000 that Subaru gave. Okay. Part of that money, I believe 100000 is going towards mobile home demolition. Does the town have to put in for that to get some of that? I haven't cash? heard any details about oh. that. So it's still pretty new, right? It, it might be, though, week. that um, that Vermont Emergency Management is dealing with it based on the, the homeowners submitting their interest okay. in the, the buyout. And we've been telling people if you've got any interest in that, you should put your information in as a commit you but get it in there so yeah, it's in the works. Do the folks at the trailer parks on this side of town know that? I don't know that everybody yeah. knows that okay. kind of thing. Some people are paying attention, uh, as you know from some of the meetings we've had, or, and then. I suppose the owner of that house that they were just talking about probably isn't paying any attention at all. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I would be willing to bet that three or four of the people on the mobile home park are paying attention closely enough to know that. Okay. Maybe. 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 Do we have a sense, Carl, of how many people are inquiring about abatement? I'm sorry, I don't know the number. I just know that last Thursday or Friday, somebody in the office mentioned uh, about the response that we're getting to the letter that went out. Um, so people are intending to apply or are applying for abatements. So the abatement would be a teardown or just fix? It, no, it would be um, an abatement for uh, on their taxes uh, based on the oh. condition and the BCA is going to have to decide how to handle it if they're going to take it uh, tax in installment payment by tax installment payment what the condition of the property was in this first quarter and then what it is in the second quarter so for some of them they might be able to proceed directly to wow. That's only if that's what they apply for. Right? If, they're going to, if they're demolishing, like the man um, on Fuller Main Street, it's already taken down a house or another structure. <coughs> yeah. Um, okay, next up on the flood topics is the Sterling Market meeting. Okay, yeah, just to just the news that the meeting is scheduled for Wednesday at noon. Involves some state officials, people from Pomelo Real Estate, the grocer, and the town. The meeting will be at the, at the market. And I'm not sure what's going to come out of that meeting, but it's to get I think I was asked to attend, so. I'm planning on being there. You are. Thank you. That's promising. A meeting is a good step. Agreed. A meeting is a good step. Duncan, is it worth having preservation trust if that this early in the game? I don't know. It's not my meeting. Pomelo asked for it. Pomelo asked for it or the state? It was started between the state and Pomelo. I think between the floodplain and river corridor protection program in Pomelo. And then somewhere, somebody invited the state's hazard mitigation office manager. And then we were involved. That might be a good meeting for Scott to attend. Yeah, because of the I'd have walked out. Okay. Noon, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Because Rebecca Pfeiffer's. Yeah. Either going to be there or sending a representative. I'm not sure. And if it's okay with you guys, since it's my first rodeo on this event, um, I'm just going to be tight lipped and take a lot of notes. And if I'm asked for comment, I just need to 
And so we all these layers from there. anybody on the people who can make decisions. Just elbow them on the side and be like, this is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if it's useful, I can give you an overview of what Sterling Market and Associated Grocers is thinking right now. Yeah. Different new updates from last time we heard? Um, I don't know how new it is. Um, the basic, basic thought process is um, trying to undertake flood mitigation improvements to the existing building. Ernie has no interest in trying to uh, move or relocate the building. Um, he made it very clear to me that that's not on the table. And if that is the desire of the community or whatever, um, he'll donate, he'll raise the building, donate it to the town uh, as green space. Um, his basic rationale for that is um, the moment he does something outside of the footprint, he's into Act 250. Um, the moment he does anything other than that, he's into full floodplain zoning regulations. Um, and all of those things would, he's, you know, he's done some analysis of this financially. Um, all of this would basically put the building out of reach for a small grocery retailer the size of the market. Um, so he is, his theory is, in associated grocery's theory is, um, there's a price per square foot that that market can afford to pay. And if he were to try and rebuild or relocate or build a new structure, he'd be up in the $30 a square foot range for rental retail space, and that does not fit for AGI, AG Associated Grocers. Um, you know, they can't, they can't make it work at that square footage. So he's, he's trying to basically look at measures which would flood proof the building to a height of five feet, um, including filling in two feet of the base floor, adding three foot of additional flood uh, protections, changing the windows, um, you know, it's he's talking about millions of investment to that building to get it to that um, five foot level. He is fully cognizant that the five foot would not have, um, you know, been adequate in this flood. Um, but his perspective at this point is that the vast majority of the floods within the last fifty years it would meet, you know, would have it would have protected the building. He's also talking about putting in huge sump pumps um, in the building uh, to be able to pump water out as it comes in. Um, you know, at some point that becomes a losing battle. But as he pointed out, the water rises fast and tends to go down relatively fast. And, you know, in that scenario, pumps might be able to keep up with it. I don't know. But that's, that's the general thought process right now is that he has no intention of relocating. You know, he, he's heard the talk about Legion Field and about Manchester Lumber and about, um, you know, the industrial park. He has no interest in any of that. Such a good system. What's a good system? The, the fact that <clears throat> there's so many hurdles in place that prevent him from doing something better because he would have to spend so much money. <clears throat> Yeah, just on the initial that it would be yeah. out of um, out of reach, so you can spend millions of dollars just keeping it where it is. Yeah, even but even though you know, I talked with him a little bit about the industrial park as being a permitted location, and he, he basically still said, in order to build a building, you know, that would be suitable for that type of business, his retail rental rate, square foot rate that he'd have to charge would exceed the ability of a small retail grocer to go for it. Well, the ability of this market catchment area to support, basically. Correct. Correct. He could build a huge building, but it still wouldn't. He'd have to attract a hand of birds or something, and that they've happen. done the analysis, and there's a more stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's, that's kind of, you know, his, his perspective on it really is a reality check. 
on what he can and can't do as an individual business owner and what he's willing to do and what I, w I would say also that at this point he's talking about an investment well above what he anticipates he'll be able to get out of that for market rates you know for retail rates which is you know he's happy to do I mean he's you know he hasn't said this but other people that I've talked to are basically saying it's a philanthropy philanthropic move on his part to rebuild in this location yeah. so that we have a market in in the downtown. So the the raising of the floor two feet, mm -hmm. raising of the ceiling two feet, three feet, three feet, and having the pumps. So the last three events that have flooded them, 95 would have been fine, the ice storm would have been fine, it would have just been this one. And if had they had the pumps, sort of like New Orleans, and the walls withstood that kind of hydraulic pressure. Yeah, we could have survived it. And he, he obviously needs to do that analysis yeah. to, of that hydrostatic pressure. Right. Piece. Would that now be under the town's review under mm -hmm. the zoning? You'll have to compare all those costs yeah, to the assessed value of the we have been driving away. So we got to miss the last week. Higher. We have, uh, mm -hmm. but, but we believe all the uh, assessor's cards for all the properties. Yeah. Kind of the wrong yeah. light table there. I just should have given it to you. It did flood in 95. Thank you. The store did. Yeah, it was like. We're, yeah, saying, yeah. we're saying, yeah. With, with the the more floodgates more. might have kept it out for 95. Mm -hmm. He's adding floodgates. But I think anyway. he's still, that two foot foot lift was still flooded in 95. Oh, the two foot lift, yeah. He's talking about a total of five foot of flood mitigation yeah. efforts. Yeah. And again, I think you know, I think the the hydrostatic pressure That's analysis thing. Yeah. is yeah. really important. Clearly, the windows in the front. Yeah, no, <laughs> not going to be there. You know. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let's go to municipal leading is a good step. Um, can we? Is there anything I, I know that? You know, Ron submitted a, a flood uh, report. Does that fit into the basic flood reports? Is there anything on that report? We still that have more under this we need topic. To talk about? Well, we still have more on this topic. Oh, so, so. We have to get to a municipal building vault. <clears throat> yes, I just want to make you aware that <clears throat> there were uh, papers on the lower levels of shelves and in file cabinets there that and they got wet. And nothing has been done with those. Really? And They're still in the file cabinets? Yes. And um, also, we um, believe that the um, SERP Pro did not wipe things down in the vault. Um, staff asked me about putting the plaques back in the hanging file downstairs and so we went down to check it and so we asked that question one or if they did and we just did finger swipe in on that rack and it was all you know that muddy silk um, so um clearly that particular frame was not quite down so we're thinking that all the the shelving in the file cabinets down there should be quite down. Um, but just so you know, if there is some work that needs to be done. And um, of course, things are different now with the clerk's absence. But somebody needs to take the um, initiative to start sorting through those papers and saying, yes, this needs to be kept. Um, and needs to be salvaged somehow and no this is no is it necessary even before the flood so let's not put the effort into saving that and, and have it recycled it looks like some of, um i went in this weekend it looks like some of the listers files were part of that too well that could be um i haven't looked in there the listers haven't said anything to me about their office but that very well could be some stuff in there that needs to go. I just assumed that because there were um, folders of wet 
material on the floor just <clears throat> outside of the file cabinets in the Lister's office. Fortunately, all of the Lister's cards are available oh. in a digital format. I think they keep paper records because some people still like to not go through paper records, but they're historical cards. I noticed that those can be very helpful in doing research and answering people's claims about things. You go back and find the records from, let's say, not the last reappraisal, which was around 2019 or so, but go back to one before that. Um, those records could be helpful. So if that's what got damaged, and there's no electronic copy, that's an option to be considered to scan those and save them that way. Okay. So do you know who can do, who can review to determine, to determine what we need to consider what we don't? Well, the Secretary of State's office can give the clerk's office some advice or advice but give them regulations about how long certain records have to be kept mm -hmm. and then some of those records and somebody from the town's going to have to say yes well even though that could be disposed of now we have this reason for wanting to keep it longer i don't know that it, that the, one of the assistant clerks should be taking that responsibility and saying even though this is older than the retention period, so we're going to get rid of it and then have somebody else come back later and say, well, how come that's gone? Where did it go? So, so maybe it would be a listing of documents and run it by the clerk of the select board to say, this is what we plan to get rid of. Is this okay? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you if I got a list. And Rosemary was recommending it was gotten rid of. I would. It's Rosemary's responsibility. She's responsible yeah, for all of that. I think we should just FaceTime Rosemary as we go through the files. Right at home. Okay. Well, then with, uh, maybe somebody in the office can start making a list of things and then run it by Rosemary and just let you know what the decision is. Yeah, and with Rosemary out, Susan is the assistant town clerk, right? You know, what, is, what is she? She's the... She is, well, Rosemary's out. She's the clerk. She's, she's Rosemary's. That's what I mean. She's yeah, Rosemary's that's what I was getting at. <clears throat> so I think she has authority in Rosemary's absence, and she's going to ask Rosemary anyway. So yeah. uh, I will talk to Sue. And... So can I serve you to just miss those files? They, they didn't open them? Nobody... I don't think they went in the ball. But they didn't go not in the ball. I'm not sure what yeah, they did they're, because as Beth they're, said, there was stuff in the right. office too. So I think this way, Evan, $1,300 to restore the right. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. 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 So what do we need to do? The documents in the ball, if they started touching those and one of them went um, yeah, it's better. Yeah, I think I, we empower so, Susan. To no, 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 that's not what I mean. So Susan, first step is Susan, and the second step is we need to get, maybe we can ask Al and Candy if they can do wipe downs of the shelves and cabinets. I like it. Yeah. They're probably going to have to have, is there existing capacity to... How can we deal with literally getting stuff off the shelves in there? Are we going to need some volunteers? Or it's, we're pretty short on existing staff at the moment. Yeah, I, I guess I'm picturing that we'll have to do it in several steps because I don't think there's enough room to take all the mm -hmm. stuff off everything. You're going to have to say we're going to take right. off this and put it out on tables and what used to be the office area, let them wipe everything down and put the stuff back in. Yeah, we're rotating. Yes. And um, while that's going on, Susan could be making a list of records. 
has anyone peeked under the plastic on the desks to make sure that there are issues growing? You got any? I understand, I guess, your question, but I'm not aware that anybody has. Probably should do that. You cut the plastic right off. Just take it off. Well, we're going to want it on if we're going to with the rebuilding. You're just going to want the stuff moved. Not in there anymore. It's not my stuff. So and it's space not space our space, space, but I think we it's should do just the desks. The checks. Or kind of. A whole, all the stuff on and, and around the desks we'll put on the desks and on the chairs and the plastic was put around it when the serve pro was in oh. tearing sheetrock and that kind of thing so your question is did they spray mold aside or other um, was any of that stuff wiped out i think that it does it's that? not in their best interest not to do something like that but i'm just saying that yeah. we haven't removed the plastic no. at all well Again. other than like here and there I mean, it's been a really humid summer. And it's been long. And, there, and there's no insulation in their interior moisture barrier. How much moisture? Chances are. It's <laughs> yeah, not that's, good. That's what happened to me. I took the. Took... Um, we should probably get a dehumidifier in there. There are two down there. There are two still running. The staff uh, sensed that there was hu uh, extra humidity there, so they went out and bought two tires and they're running all the time. Perfect. Um, okay. Does that cover all the issues with Walt at this point? Yes, I, that covers the point that I wanted to bring up. Okay. Um, substantial damage determination. So we, we talked um, about a couple of things here already. Um, and we're going to try to, to meet with somebody from the floodplain protection and river corridor program on Wednesday, either before or after the sterling market. <clears throat> we need to find out the status of their inspections here in town. Yeah. This is Scott and I talked, there's no sense in him duplicating what they've already done. Totally agree. And they were, they were here. The meeting was the 9th or the 16th? 9th. Right. So when that town hall meeting happened on the 9th, Rebecca had said it'd be about two weeks to get all of the in 100 year floodplain out of historic district done. And letters would go out around that time, which is now. We're here. It's come and gone, actually. And then the second round would be resident it would second round would be buildings outside of the hundred year FEMA eighty four map is what I mean by hundred year by the way. Um, which is pretty much the rest of flooding. Right? And that would be a, a few weeks beyond that. That would people would get people would get letters. But she basically said if you were flooded you'll get a letter. Well yes I think we were looking at sending especially everybody who received an invite to that meeting um, so that they know that this substantial damage determination process is not applied to them for whatever reason. Yeah. The historic um, contribution part is the main reason. Or that they're not out, they're out of the floodplain. Or they were substantially damaged. Yeah. One of those three. Well, categories. she's that determination. Yes. What they're doing, as far as I know, is just estimating the cost. The other part of that is comparing it to the assessed value of the structure. And I'm not aware that they've asked for that information. And that's how they would determine the substantial damage in these properties, yeah. Okay, so you'll know more after Wednesday. Okay. okay. I put E on there, FEMA, but then I forgot to, to print off Ron's report that he sent me this afternoon. In our last meeting, there was a report from Ron, and I ran down through it for you. Do we all have that? It was sent to us. Was it sent to all of you? This evening? Well, 
I like Friday. 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 I got it. Today, Today? Lee didn't believe that. It's a it's a one pager about the it's from disaster Ron. Jack. Yeah, from Ron. I got one two days ago, but not for the week of August 28, 2023. I think it was sent to everybody. I don't think it was today. I think that's no, it's not today. It today. Oh yeah, okay, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, August sent, two, sent two days ago. Is there is there anything on the report, Carl, that you think What's needs that? to be brought to our attention? I don't know. I. I mm -hmm. I acknowledged it and then never got to print it out and read it. Okay. I don't know. So well, I read it and I, to me, it looks more like a recounting or recapping of activities that he's done. I don't, I didn't see anything on it that specifically requires our action. Okay. And with FEMA, we're meeting with them tomorrow. Uh, we have five hours blocked off. Uh, for the meeting in the office and then touring damaged road areas and um, buildings. And that's based on Ron's experience at Hyde Park. But we could take that off. You're talking about the email says FEMA next steps? Yes. Yeah. And Carl, is that all damaged buildings or just? Public or no, this is for the public assistance parts of the town's buildings. I wasn't on it, Duncan. I'm not oh. crazy. What? I wasn't on it, so I'm not crazy. You didn't get it? Yeah, yeah. it's only got myself, Mark, and Beth on this email. You're not on the same email as all that. must have sent it to you. He must have sent it to you separately. Okay. You want to see it? I'll read it tomorrow. I was um, confused. Anything else for flood related? Any other? Well, there's the. Uh, did Evan bring it up at the beginning of the meeting? You Beth brought it up. Grant I read it up. It's the next agenda item. Okay, let's jump into it. So that, yeah, the opportunity for a letter of intent for riverbank mitigation. United States Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Services Administrator and Emergency Water Site Protection Program. A lot of acronyms here. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a, a letter of intent that's due. Well, NRCS may bear up to 75% of, of eligible construction costs of emergency measures uh, within limited resource areas as identified by the U.S. Census data. The remaining costs must be varied by, by the sponsor, um, but the town can be a sponsor. And in essence, the town can ask the person that's asking for a sponsor to pay them the 25%. Wonderful caveat. Um, I believe this is due by September 6th. And does it have the letter of a specific intent. proposal for is a specific just site? Just the letter of intent. No, it was uh, an email that I got from. Honestly, I was confused by that too. Uh, weren't you? I was too. From Robert Thompson. It was just kind of a, uh, the email went to all EMDs. That's why I got it. And then I think the Mount Emergency Management sent it out. Yeah, to all, they have like, like you sent it to the select board, it goes to the S5. They have all EMDs, it's all emergency management directors in the state. So you could submit a letter of intent. I did look at that sample. <coughs> Today and it's information that we could put together if you want to submit a letter of intent, uh, you know, without having to get engineering or a lot of surveying or anything. And the program has allows for two possibilities. As Evan was saying, this could be 
used to help a private property owner, in which case they're suggesting in the email even that the town or the city would form an agreement with the property owner that the property owner is going to be responsible for that 25% local share. Or it could be a municipal project, and in which case the town would be responsible for 25%. So uh, I talked with Jason because I had heard about a couple of washouts that the town had. And um, he informed me that the state has basically fixed the section of the rail trail by River Road East. Mm -hmm. That was one of the two spots that I had heard about. There was some question about who was going to do what because it starts down by the river and affects the rail trail and then it comes up in a sort of threatening River Road East. But the state's pretty much taken care of that. The other area that he mentioned was the, uh, on the class three section of Lenway Lane. Uh, there is um, some erosion starts down at the riverbank. He said that it is um, maybe 15 to 18 feet high, but 350 feet wide. Quite a large section along along the riverfront, 350 feet. Yes, along the river and up towards the road. Um, so that is on the FEMA list, but something that they'll go inspect tomorrow. But you might consider applying for this particular grant to help with reducing the town's share of that repair work and then i asked about private property owners affected and he offered that one of the homes on westcombe road um, the, the, pro the homeowner owns land on the right side of westcombe above the flood but they also own a lot on the opposite side of westcombe road and lost um, lost land i forget now what he said how many feet but it's not just like a couple of feet, 15, 20 feet, 25 feet of property was eroded away. And uh, that's a situation where this grant program could be used to, if nothing else, to stabilize the riverbank there to help prevent them losing more of the property. But they would have to, if you would choose, pay the 25% local share. Yep, they're interested. The property owners would. Yeah. And um, there's a whole bunch of properties that are just losing. I mean, there's a lot of properties that are just losing their yard. Railroad Street. Where, all behind Railroad Street, that whole stretch. Some people like losing many feet at a time over different events. Um, and on Route 100, uh, Route 15 also on that stretch, I noticed opposite to um, Holmes Meadow, like that back, those houses, the, the FEMA house that owned the FEMA sign, like back there, they just keep losing yeah. too. Like they look, there's a significant amount of ground lost there. Um, so I think that the whole area because it goes down to Westcom. That whole area is just looted, losing significant amounts. My family lives on the railroad street sections, actually in some of the houses they're losing. And they've, I mean, we've lost many, many feet over the years to their backyard. Yeah, we lost Which, a significant amount in our backyard, just as the peninsula like, goes out right in between the Lowell and Guillaume, and I mean, probably a good third was shaved off of it. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, when we lose property like that, it means we need to lose land too. The river is taking over, in theory, depending on how much of it is gone. Depends on what corner you talk about. Right, well, there you go. But I was walking down by the river behind my place, and, and we're behind the church, it's really cutting out towards the Union Bank. There's a big three phase power line there that's like. Eight feet from, a, you know, quite a drop off. 
How does that work with the state rules of letting rivers do what they want to do and not uh, impeding that from doing it? Great question. Let us know when you find yeah, the you answer. You have to get no, not much <laughs> now. I'm just wondering how that all falls together. Yeah. Yeah. Having, it's a rule done, until it's not. Having done some of those riprap projects, uh, bank stabilization projects in the past, you have to get a write-off from, um, as a former uh, road foreman in Georgia used to say, a stream altercation permit mm -hmm. um, from the stream alteration division. So it's it's a good point, Scott, and just I understand the, the idea of losing property, but I can tell you from personal experience, every time you armor a section of river, something happens downstream mm -hmm. of that armoring, um, you know, which, which erodes or, you know, the, every action has a adverse and equal yeah. reaction. The river's definitely changed. We floated from Katie's Falls down to Johnson about a week ago, and it was like, oh my God. Yeah. What happened to my rapids is like they're over there now. River morphology is over there changes. Yeah. Surprisingly, the river wasn't that <clears throat> beat up with debris. <clears throat> so, what's the answer to our question? Do we want to do we want to submit a letter of intent, which would at least allow us the option? Is that is that what I'm hearing, Carl? Is that submitting a letter of intent gets your foot in the door at least? Yes. And but the sample letter that I saw, you would have to state what the project is. You just can't put in a, a letter of intent saying yeah, we're going to apply for a grant without <clears throat> naming it what it's going to be. So do you want to do the, the two areas that Jason is concerned about? That's what I was thinking. Really yeah. just Jason, um, I, I can't say that he was concerned. I asked him for information about the town's um, loss and then asking for what private so I don't want to mischaracterize it as Jason's concerns. Well, the, the Lendway piece seems like a standout. Um, and what was he said? The, it was River Road East was the other one? Or no, that one was taken care of. The yeah, state was West Cumber Road. West Cumber Road. <clears throat> the thing is that I feel like we should be asking if there's any option for an extension because I mean, they just asked like two days ago. This is not, I looked, oh, checked to see fairness, how long it was sitting Yeah, I got the bus. email Thursday, but I didn't read it until this morning. Whatever, it was Thursday. Like, they're asking us a question that we are a significantly hit community. Reaching out to all potential property owners equitably, like this is not yeah, a sufficient not amount of time for us to reach out to all the property owners. What does the letter of intent do? September 6th or something like that. Before we meet next. Yeah, at the end of next week. So I think it's worth reaching out and just asking that question. Like, can this, like, do we have more time to actually reach out to our property owners? Because I don't know who's going to be interested or not, but I know that if I felt like I was losing property significantly, I might be interested. I don't know. Yeah, then the question becomes, you know, if the town is going to sponsor that. Um, I'm not saying we're sponsoring anything. That That is a down the road. But we should at least let people know options. But but it sounded to me from what Carl said that if even if a private person was going to do it, the town would ultimately they would have to be a sponsor of the project and we could make them responsible for 20, the 25% match. Yeah. But I don't know what being a sponsor in that sense means. Scott's question about, you know, permitting and all of that. I, I don't want to. I don't want to spend yeah. our time. Yeah, that. it was. I agree. That was only a brief read. That's so late in the process yeah. before the deadline is hard. But I, but if 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 that section of Lenway Lane, I, that was the one that yeah. I was wondering about. If that is threatening our road long term stream alteration people will give you, or at least they would give you a waiver on the requirements if it, if there was public infrastructure in danger of, you know, in danger of collapse. So, and so. And we are on Chris Brunel's list uh, to come out and do an inspection. And of that, town. of that, but, yeah. 
So I, I don't see a Garmin throwing an order of intent and using that as yeah, a anyway. as a potential. I agree with you totally. If, if we can get an extension, that's great. We should get an extension. We should ask the questions to know what it means to be a sponsor, and we should be supporting our residents if there is an option to do so that doesn't put us directly liable for anything. But we don't have the answers to any of those questions, so. Um. Well, I'm going to make a motion. Um, the motion would be to ask the questions. Uh, can we get an extension? Um, what does it mean to be a sponsor for private property? And if the answer is we can't get an extension, um, I would, my motion would be to submit the letter of intent for, at a minimum, the one way line project. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? No second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. So we're doing Shane's item and then pages. Okay, so yeah, I spoke with Tech Group um, and basically um, we were discussing the uh, we had talked about doing photo storage for people who want to uh, provide photos of flood damage and such. Um, I first asked whether they had any uh, specific software they recommended for this. They did not. Um, he didn't want to caution me, which my, my second question was about this, but as soon as I asked the first question, he cautioned me about any of these things being uh, you know, a potential avenue for people to Secure upload uh you know not you know, content that is not what we want uploaded um and he wasn't able to answer the question of whether any of that content being on our uh server would be liability for us uh he said that would be a lawyer question uh but you know that it probably wouldn't be too hard for us to answer that question with a little bit of thought so um, one workaround that he suggested was uh, that since we have OneDrive included as part of our office package, um, what we can do is create a separate email address um, specifically for this purpose. And then using that email address, we can send a email link out to people who want to upload photos. People who upload photos through that link. And then by doing that, we remove the anonymity we remove the you know someone random can get the link and upload whatever they want to it um it's a one-time link that's only you know usable to the person that gets emailed to so um that is that is the workaround that that he had suggested um and you know the, the thought was that we could create an email that's just something like photo that town of johnson.com or something like that um and have people interface with that did you say anything about software that monitors content? No. Um, he did say that we would have to, uh, you know, as far as town employees looking at it, um, you know, we'd probably have to, you know, and that was another thing that he said would be a question for the lawyers. If a town employee is subjected to something questionable uh, in, you know, the, the their normal work, uh, is that something that we are liable for? So this is another question that um, we would have, but he didn't suggest anything as far as software to monitor it. Um, I think it would be a, a human that would have to monitor it. And if there was anything unrelated, they would have to get rid of it. Yeah, that's a hard no for me. Hard no, bro. <laughs> so the, the only pushback I'll give on that is that the, the initial concern of people uploading random stuff brought on by the Zoom bombing of a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, I know people will do that kind of stuff. I do think that the the workaround gives us the ability to, at the very least, know who is uploading to it. Um, and another suggestion he had is, you know, if we do something like Dropbox, we could require that someone log in with a verified email address in order to upload to it. So there are there are ways that we can get rid of the anonymity piece of it. Um, 
we would just have to hope that anyone with their actual name would not want to put anything illegal into our Dropbox or something along those lines. But that's the that's the input from the tech group on uh, on that. The other thing I'll say is that the village already has a Dropbox set up. I haven't spoken with them yet about whether they did any of this due diligence before setting it up, um, but they did better. They had their contracted company do it. So maybe we just have Ron do it, or we don't do it. It was all liability. He's the one that needs photos anyways. Typically, we're the ones who are asking for photos, but... Well, we're asking at his request. Well, which he's doing at our request. And which he would bill on us. On our payroll. <laughs> right. I don't know. Uh, just do a hashtag. Move on. Oh my gosh. Okay, Evan. Um, I already well, had the hashtag about flooding. It's done. <clears throat> it's yeah, the hashtag there. has been in use. I've I noticed. I didn't. I didn't get it. I've noticed people actually going back <laughs> and adding the hashtag to their old photos as well. What is it? Oh, so, five six five six flood. So boring. That's how you ensure um, no one else is using it already. Lame. So we already have the hashtag. A great idea, Evan. And it was Johnson your... underwater. Flooded with photos. Um, so I just wonder how much we need more photos because I don't want us to be hosting them. Yeah. I don't hate the idea of a vendor hosting them on our behalf, honestly, but I would want it to be a technical vendor, not somebody who is contracted to do other things. And they made very clear that they don't offer that as a service, and if they did, it would be much more expensive than any of the other. If they did, we could afford it. Okay. Well, so what do we want to do? Move on with life. Um, can you ask, do you mind asking Ron what, if there are specific needs around photos that he needs us to seek? Hashtag dumpster. I would be happy to reach out to people who, um, I can't write. <coughs> Reach out to people who probably took pictures. I mean, honestly, we could just. H2O in J Town. You're having altogether too much fun just thinking of a good hashtag. <laughs> I'm really tech savvy. Yeah, I think we need to understand what the need is. I think that's a good idea because I think we could get a lot of people sending a lot of pictures that wouldn't be useful at all. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for the update, Shane. Yep, yeah, thank you. Here, I have one right here with the rainbow. Okay, over next up the is that's it, executive session. But before I leave, um, I haven't done anything <clears throat> with W2s or anything else, so officially I'm still a citizen. You're still Scott. But tomorrow I was going to go down to the town and uh, get my email unlocked. I downloaded the app. I still can't get into it. I'm sure somebody can help me out down there. And I'll fill out my W2s. Susan. 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 Yeah. Okay. And just for chain of command, I get my direction and answer to Carl, correct? Yes. Yes, unless Carl's away and you need to connect with Ron for Got specific FEMA related items, but okay. yes, otherwise Carl. Right. Okay. Carl's awesome. Yeah, and we did, you know, so you know, we did um, authorize the boss board meeting to have you work with Ron. Yes, that's you know, right. As much as you need to. Yeah, to yeah there was a, a limit on it, but we're hoping generally not to have a crazy amount. Like um, I don't have anything uh, so far, right. so we're all good right now. And I'll just, if I have predictions of how much time I need to spend, I'll just let you all know. And cool. We'll all be good. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Um, so this is for, um, is this for uh, potential appoint employment or for a contract negotiation? One one item that I was hoping to discuss was just to fill you in on the results of background check data on 
one perspective in play, and the other would be a specific request to consider an offer of employment. So, <clears throat> they're the same one. Hmm? No, they're different. Oh, but the same. Yeah, the same. I motion to enter into executive session as allowed by one VSA 313A3 for uh, discussions of a current contract negotiation as well as potential future contract negotiation update. Second. No expected action out of it? No, don't say that because they don't know. Well, I'm so. asking that as a question. He already seconded before I asked the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is there is discussion there? There's possible action. I would, I would, my hope would be that we can have a possible action. But that ultimately will be up to the five of you. I wish that was one, but. Um, all right, we have a motion and a second. Potential action coming out. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I don't have it. And Evan just said hi.